I have two events, same time. They probably started maybe an hour um, from each other. And I used to send him with some equipment to one event while I DJed one. And we would play like a mix I would have at the other one. We used to finish this whole game. Yeah, nah. It, it, it's been a while. It's been a while. But, but yeah, no, no. I definitely love That's the only thing I do a love, love about DJing, which I could imagine. Let me know when you're recording, by the way, Leaf. Um, I could imagine you probably like, especially you've been around and seen, like, you know, like rapping and stage performances. It's like if, if, if you're doing a scene, right? If you're doing a scene, for you to get that feedback, it takes probably months, I don't know, like weeks or whatever. Um, but if you're on a stage, and that's what I've realized, that's the thing that really draws me to like DJ, right? Because sometimes I'm like, I'm talking to a camera and like you're like looking for some type of validation or whatever the case is, but it's it's not, it's just comments at times. And sometimes right. you're making a video, like we're doing this here. It's gonna take a couple of days before people see it. Right. And then we're, you gotta like, oh, okay, nah, they were fucking with me. When you're in front of a crowd, there's nothing that beats that. Whether you're a rapper, whether you're an athlete, you know, whether you're a DJ. And yeah, so obviously, naturally, I definitely want to go back to it. Yeah. You've, have, have you ever like performed? I have. Yeah, I just really? performed um, at South by Southwest. Really? Yeah. How was that? Um, it was really cool because I'm from Austin, Texas. And so I used to go to South by like as a teenager. Yeah, um, South by came back, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a little different than it used to be. Um, but I remember, like, being, like, 16 years old. I somehow made it to the Wiz Khalifa Ty Dolla Sign show. And um, that was fucking crazy. I don't even know how I got, like, backstage passes. I don't even know how that happened. But yeah. And now to perform at the same festival is, like, it's full circle. Wow. You know? Um, man, where do I start? I feel like this is a... I feel like you got a lot to say. This is a, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I'll start like this. Welcome to Off The Record Podcast. Uh, it's Woody's Academics in the building. I am here with someone who we've been trying to... I feel like, me, first of all, me and her have beefed on and off. Many disagreements. But you know what? It's, it, it's all good when you could sit down with the person you've disagreed with at times and come to a common ground. Uh, some of you guys might know on Twitter, on Instagram... Um, as Destiny Creams. Some of you might know her for being Freddie Gibbs' ex-girlfriend. Um, however you know her, hopefully today you'll get to know a different side of her. Uh, Destiny. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. First of all, the name, I think the name is Fire. How did you even get that name? What do you mean? What name? Destiny Creams. Like, that's like a fire <laughs> name. Like, yo, I'm telling you, all porn names are like fire. Honestly, I, I just, that was just something I came up with. Um, it just kind of rolled off. Is Destiny time. your real name? Destiny is my real name. Really? Why go yeah. with your real name? Usually, because I feel like my real name sounds like a porn name. Like my name is Destiny Fox, and a lot of people think that's a fake name. Not your government. That's not. Your that's name. my government name. Destiny Fox. Yeah. Stop it. I promise. <laughs> is that what we book for her to get hit? No way. Destiny Fox. No my way. Name. So a lot of people hear that name and they think that that's my stage name, and I'm like, no, that's my government name. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go with Destiny, but what, Destiny what? So at first it was Destiny Cox, because Fox, like Cox. Yeah, 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 and I was yeah. like, mm, I just don't like the way it sounds. I don't feel like it fits me for real. And then one day I was laying in bed. I was like, Destiny Creams. Like, yeah, that makes sense. It's, I like it. Uh, well, uh, creams just brings another visualization. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. Uh, I, I, I want to get the full story. Um how you started, how did you even get into entertainment? We'll get to all the bullshit, all the drama. Trust me, I got a lot of questions to ask. Um, but I do want to know about you because when I first got introduced to you, I was like, where'd this girl come from? Right. Who is she? And then I started doing, doing a little research. I'm like, oh, okay, she's been around in certain capacities, but how does she even get started? So yeah, were you born in uh, Austin, Texas? Yeah, I was born in Austin, Texas. Um, right out of high school, I joined the Army. So I was overseas for like the first couple years of adulthood from like 18 to 20. Why the army though? It was just something that I knew was going to take me out of my hometown and I knew the army was going to take care of me. So um, I was just in a real sticky situation growing up and I was like, I really want to get out of here. The army. Okay. 
So, um, my parents, my parents who adopted me because I was adopted, um, really? actually signed the paperwork for the military when I was seventeen. So they gave me that consent. Um, did you never think about college? I did college in the army, mm. so I took college classes in, during my military service. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask this, but it's more of a facetious question, given the fact that I know people are going to think about your profession. They'll they'll always have this in mind. Um, they'll be like, "Well, girl, doing adult entertainment, daddy problems." Mm. Um, you were adopted. Yeah, so I was adopted uh, when I was two, and that's because my father was in prison at the time. Really, he was doing some time. He was getting his life together. Um, but we have a very good relationship now. So you met him after he got released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's um, my father. Actually, lives with me. Really? Um, so yeah, we're really your biological close. father. Yeah. How, how is that um, even adjustment? Because now, you know, you were adopted. You grow up with this family. Which, if you got adopted at two, you're growing up with this whole different family. Right. Now, you then meet your biological father. Like, how do you even process that? You know. Hey, he wasn't here for a certain parts of your life. You grew up with a different family, but still, he is your biological father. I felt like I was home when I met him. Like, that man is the male version of myself, like, to the T. Um, and it's really crazy because when he did get out of prison, he was trying to, um, like, get back custody of me. Mm -hmm. um, he showed me so many letters that he wrote from, like, 1998. Like, I'm trying to get in contact with my daughter. Nobody's listening to me. Um, and he still has those letters. Like it was, it was a really crazy story. But we're we're like this. Like we're super tight. Really. So I love the. I live for the. Oh, your dad must not be proud of you. You must not have a father because it's like that's the closest man to me. Mm. Like it's it's weird how people think that though. Like why? Where does that come from? Is it is it projection? What is that? I, I, I'll tell you where. So like you know, it, it's still taboo even to this day. That a you know that a woman does any type of sex work or gets involved in the adult entertainment industry, so you know to rationalize why a woman will make that decision. A lot of times, people are trying to figure out what was lacking in their come up or lacking in their childhood, mm -hmm. and usually that's one of the the things that they're like. Maybe you you sought after validation that maybe your father didn't provide and you sought it out in other men to the point where you're like, this is this is almost aiming towards like, you know, being the adult entertainment industry. I don't want to tell your story for your, for you, but you tell me why and, and how did you, so you go to the military, mm -hmm. you're there for a while. How does everything progress and how do you, how do you even get into the adult? Yeah. So I was in the military for four and a half years, really five by the time I got out. Um, and I medically retired out of the army. I was jumping out of planes. I was I was a paratrooper. Really? Yeah. He wasn't jumping out of goddamn I planes. I was jumping out of C one thirties in full combat equipment at night. Like I, I was a, I'm a soldier. I think that people forget that when they when they start talking about me. Okay, um, this is gonna sound very naive. Hopefully not sexist, but it might sound sexist. They're letting the women jump out of the plane like that. Yeah, that's the military. Really? They, they let women in the infantry now. The infantry has been open to women for like five years. Why, you know, there's so many different job opportunities within the military, right? Why was that attractive to you? Or why, why was this something? So I wasn't in? infantry. I was a supply sergeant. So basically what I did in the military was I made sure my unit had everything we needed in case we were to deploy. Um, but I was stationed in um, an airborne unit. So if you're going to be in an airborne unit, every single person has to be airborne qualified. Doesn't matter if you if you're ever gonna jump out of a plane in your real job or not. You have to know how to do it. Mm. So it wasn't like I wanted to do it, but I was told that I had to do it. And Scary. When you you got to follow orders, huh? Scary. I was terrified. Okay. But I think the only way to face your fears is to face them. You feel me? Like you can't. You're not gonna get over nothing if you don't do it. So that's what I did. I went and I did it. So I did that shit. I can cuss on here. Of course. Okay. So I did that. Um, well, I ended up getting in an airborne accident, like a really bad accident. Really? And um, basically, I, I tucked my chin to land to prevent concussion. Because when you land, you land hard. This is with the parachute, right? Yeah, yeah. I had my parachute. I had my helmet, everything. But you're supposed to land a certain way. And so when I tucked my chin to my chest, there was a D-ring on my reserve parachute, which sits on the front of you. And it came up and it filleted my nose in half. Like My nose was like cut off, like off my face. Really? Yeah. 
And um, I got my nose stapled, you know, did that, fixed it, whatever. It's still, it still collapsed on the right side. But I had a six-month-old daughter at the time. And I, my mental health was just declining so bad that I had to make that choice like, okay, I got to be a mom right now. I can't do this military shit no more, you know? Yeah. So I got out of the military. I was married at the time. Really? My daughter's dad. Yeah, I actually, did, did you marry him before getting into the military? No, I met him in the military. Really? He was my platoon sergeant. <laughs> Wait, can you date up or you're not supposed to? Okay, but you did. Um, uh, I, I'll you know again, and I'm asking some of these questions out of slight ignorance, but also you know just off whatever. In trying to figure out even how you get to the adult, and again, this these are all questions trying to figure out how you get there, right? I've heard the military is extremely sexualized. A thousand percent. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, um, while being there and, you know, you were there for four years, are you going through that as well? So what I need people to think about when they're listening to this is I joined when I was 18 years old, right? So think about the average 18-year-old. Usually good, go off to college. They have their crazy college experiences. Mm -hmm. I never lived that because I did college in the military. But I've heard the crazy college stories. I'm sure you've heard it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so when you're in the military, though, you still have all of those desires. You feel me? Like, you're still a human. Um, the military is crazy freaky. Crazy freaky. It might be worse than college. Like My friend told me that, and I still can't believe it. Because I, I went to college. I, I was a DJ you. there, and I was like, yo, I've seen some shit. No, he said, I've seen crazy. worse. crazy. <laughs> like, like, I just told you, like, okay, so. What's that perspective as a woman, though? Because yeah. we, we hear like I, like I have a bunch of friends that are men and right. and and they'll say certain shit, but it's like as a woman, an eighteen year old woman, I, I could imagine you know you're probably still pretty attractive at that point too, right? I mean, yeah, I was, I was, I literally looked just like I look now, but I oh, had okay. hair. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, so so, um, so you the I, bad bitch on you you the bad bitch on base. I was the bad bitch on base, and I, and there were other bad bitches on base too. I served with them, like but there ain't that many them. women though. And there's I think a, that's the dynamic. There's not a whole lot of women, um, but it's not because like it's not freaky because there's not a whole lot of women. It's just freaky. Like I went to Korea, I got stationed in my unit, and I met my platoon sergeant. And I was like, "Who is that?" Like I thought he was so fine, and obviously he thought I was fine too. But the thing was, is it was difficult because he was a sergeant first class and I was a private. I was 18, he was 37. Really? Yeah. So. It was some shit we had to work around. And, you know, I, I started to get the hint that he really was fucking with me because he would always schedule our duties together. So there's something called staff duty. You got to pull this 24 hour duty in a building like like if we were doing it in here, it's just you and I. Really? So he would always put us on schedule together. And one night pimpin', pimpin', I we see were it. together. Yeah. Pulling our duty. And that's when I got pregnant with my daughter. I was fucking on duty. Yeah. No way. Really? Booty on duty. Yeah, that's what we were doing. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you. No, that's no, no. What's no. going I'm, on? Why, and, um, did, did, did that age gap, because, you know, again, you're 18, wide-eyed, I would imagine, never had that college experience. Um, probably you're in a little bit for, you know, to see some shit, experience some shit, but also love and affection as well. Um, what was it about that guy who was 37? Honestly, I never... It never occurred to me. And I know that sounds crazy because looking back, being 27 now and like looking back at that situation, that's crazy. I'm 27. I would never entertain an 18 year old. Like there's no bone in my body that has a desire to do that. Um, but I guess it was something about the like him being my boss and like. It was a power dynamic. Yeah. I think that it was. And it, he had a lot to offer me too. Like when you're a private and you're overseas. You can't live off post. You have to share a barracks room with another soldier. So I was able to go off post, live with him in a penthouse, downtown Itaewon, South Korea. Like, he drove me everywhere I needed to drive, like, everywhere I needed to go. Like, it just made my life easier. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was really fucking crazy. <laughs> D during this whole time, because you say you, get, you got pregnant really quickly, right? Yeah. Did you feel that was a mistake? Because you, at what age did you get pregnant? I got pregnant when I was, I just turned 19. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, pretty quick. And also. I was very young. Yeah. And honestly, no, like I, I knew from a very 
very young age that I wanted to be, this sounds so crazy. I wanted to be a young mom. Like I wanted to have a child in my early, early adulthood. Um, Why? I always knew that. Why? I don't know. I think really in a weird fucking way, I used to watch Teen Mom all the time, that show on MTV. And I used to like, I used to envision myself being a good mom as, you know, an early, in my early adulthood. And I, and I always was like, it just came so natural to me. Was that maybe any way or any type of spurred because your biological parents wasn't there? And it's almost like a innate thing that for you to be like, you know what? I kind of want to do what probably wasn't there for me. It could be. I do find a lot of healing in being a good parent and being there for my children. Um, and I, I didn't have that until I was an adult. You feel me? Like me and my dad are super close now. He couldn't be there for a lot of my life. Not because he didn't want to, yeah. but he did some shit that he had to handle, you know? Um, but I do find healing in being present for my children and, and, you know, giving them things that I didn't always have, you know? Mm. Okay. So you get, you, you get pregnant. Um, you also have this accident, right? Right. Uh, medically, you realize, hey, listen, it's better if I just, I have to get out of this Right, situation. yeah, because I initially wanted to do 20 years. Like, I loved the Army. I was so good at my job. Um, but I got to a point where I was, I had to make a decision. And being a parent was more important uh, during that time. So I got out of the military. What did the father of your child say? Because he's he was still he, Yeah, so he was, he was in the military for like 20 years. So he was already done with his time in the military. Okay. Um, I pcs so I, it's a permanent change of station to Fort Benning, Georgia. So I went from Korea to Georgia. And mind you, during this time, I was seven months pregnant. So he was like, hey, I'm going to come home in March. I pcs in February. Well, March came around. He didn't come. He was handling some other shit in Korea. And um, so I had to do all that shit on my own. I had to find a house for me and my daughter. I had the baby on my own. Wasn't nobody was all. with me. No, nobody was with me. And um, he ended up coming home when she was six months old. Wow. Yeah. So by the time he came home. Um, Are you having a little bit of resentment at that point? Because I imagine postpartum and all these other things. It's just it's natural not things. Even, it, it wasn't even so much resentment. It was more so like I'm so used to doing everything on my own. I've always done everything on my own. This is just building little. up someone who is starting to have the mindset, I need to be independent. Right. I, I mean, I, yeah, I've always been so, so independent. Um, I think people get that confused about me, too, because they look at me and they don't know how I do it all. Sometimes I don't even know how I do it all, but I've always been super independent. Um, so by the time my daughter's two years old, my, like I said, we were married. Uh, we got married when my daughter was like six months, seven months old. Um, I'm out of the military at this point. So when she's two, I'm out. I'm retired medically. He's working at, I think he was working at a gym at the time, you know, and I was like, you know what, I'm about to go work at this private airport. So I was working at this like FBO where a lot of like VIP people will fly in and I was getting real sick of my job. Why? I was just, I felt so unimportant. Like I was a customer service representative, but I was like, what am I really doing here? You know, you felt you had no purpose. Yeah. I felt so unfulfilled and I was like, why am I even here? Um, and this is actually kind of comical, but um, my favorite artist is Pitbull. Really? And um, I say it's comical because when I tell people that's their reaction, they're like, really? Like, why? Um, I was looking for every reason to get out of that job. And I was like, God, if I'm not supposed to be here, give me a sign. And um, like 20 minutes later, my older sister called me. She's like, hey, I have an extra, I have an extra ticket to Pitbull tonight if you want to come. I, didn't, I never hopped up so quick. and I left that shit. I was like, I'm leaving. Were you place. at work? I was at work. You left work. This I night. walked out. Wow. No notice, no nothing. Because, you know, Texas, it's an at-will state. So you can get fired same day and you can leave your job same day. You don't have to give nobody no notice. But um, I left that job. I went to go see Pitbull. I had the time of my life. And um, my husband told me the next day, he was like, you know, and this is like right before COVID hit. He was like, you know, um, you should start OnlyFans. And I was like, what is OnlyFans? I had never heard of it. This is the father of your child? Yes. Yes. What year is this? This was 2020. 
he right around suggests, COVID. He suggests you should only fans. Mm-hmm. Why? That's an odd suggestion. So he, so he was more, his approach was you should start only fans. Again, I had never heard of it. Um, I was really green back then. Like I didn't, I was very like housewife, mom, stay at home type of bitch. But he was like, you should just take sexy, sexy pictures and I'll take sexy pictures of you. I was like, okay, let's do it. I had never, I had never done shit like that before. So, I mean, we did that. Was there any part of you that thought, why would you want me to do this? Not really. I kind of, I kind of was like interested in the idea. But, but, I've, I've always did loved, you think like, about his his because you, you know us as men we're so territorial so protective mm-hmm. you know it's like I, I feel like a guy would almost probably think 15 times about going to rob a bank or rob someone else rather than tell their girl to go do OnlyFans really well at, at least the people I know it's like you know because at that point and I've had this conversation with certain women who maybe they've had boyfriends that have suggested certain shit and it's like those men viewed you probably a little bit different than the majority of guys view their woman. They're usually protective of their woman. They don't want people to see their woman. They they rather, hey, listen, we will rather go commit a crime to get what we need to get rather than allow our woman to be, because almost at that point, it's almost like that dude's like pimping you out in a sense. Wait, but didn't you, weren't you with somebody that did OnlyFans? No. And no? clarify, I was never with Selena. It was, oh. No, I was never with Selena. No, like for, that's a hard no for me. Actually, I was really? with. So, so why does everybody think that? I don't know why everybody keeps saying that means. First of all, I could never be just me personally. I couldn't be with. I, I'll give you the Selena story real quick. So Selena was a friend of mine. This is before OnlyFans. We used to stream together. Um, I still stream now. I streamed last night in ten hours. Right. Um, she used to come to my stream and the interest was because we wanted to get an audience that was, I have a, a bunch of males that follow me. We want to, we want to kind of mix it up and get a couple of females following us. She would come on and give these stories about how she would, she slept with rappers. Oh, okay. I was cool with her, like friends, like, you know, Hey, we would FaceTime all the time. Um, she comes on, she gives these stories. Everything is cool. This is before only fans. And what happened is that we did end up like having sex mm. and only fans came out and, and you got to realize at that point, and this is why only fans actually, it's, it's a good thing. If you ask me, there was no monetization strategy for her. So I was making money via the stream. She was coming on, mm-hmm. but she wasn't making money. I remember vividly, I would be on, on FaceTime with her. There's like roaches and whatever there. Or she's getting arrested. Yeah, it, it, she wasn't making money. Oh, shit. And when OnlyFans happened, she went on there and, you know, it it worked for her. Right. But in branding, she made it look like, hey, I'm in this relationship with this guy. Mm. Which I thought was, like, a little bit unfair to me because I'm like, you slept with, like, a bunch of rappers. Like, I'm probably the least famous person you slept with. Why not use them as the whatever? But no, no. M- me, I would have never had to do that. And, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm glad it turned out for her the way it did because I would have blocked her from an opportunity. She didn't know how to monetize this attention that she had. People love hearing these stories about her sleeping with rappers. Didn't know how to monetize it. Mm. I didn't really know how to monetize it either. Okay, she comes on my stream. That's not really like... I feel like that, though, is such a hard... It's a It's a very, like, weird place to be in because... You have women that come forward and tell these stories about rappers or whoever. And then you have one group of people that's like so interested in what they're saying. And then you have another group of people that's like, well, what do you want us to do with this information? Why are you telling us their bit? Like, you know, I, I, I think the era of saying that you slept with someone famous is over. At yeah, that time, it was still tab- so it was still it was still taboo. Then it was like, oh, my God, mm. you're telling us how these guys are. Some of these guys have wives. Um so I, I wasn't with Selena. Selena was always always my friend. Um, of course, she you know internet wise, and they adopted as oh that was my girlfriend. 
And I ain't gonna lie, I leaned into one of the publicity <laughs> stunts she wanted to do, acting like I bought her a G wagon. Which, by the way, oh, I thought you did buy that. No, like, it, oh, see, look, y'all did is, it well. Hey, listen, listen, I leaned into it because I was like, I was watching on the shade room. I'm like, yo, these women are like falling over a little baby buying his girl like a Bentley or whatever. And I'm like, so girls like when guys give any girl a gift because they think if if he gave that girl a gift, he'll. If I get with him, he'll give me a gift. So I leaned into it, but it, it wasn't true. You're crying. I did have a girlfriend, though, and she did start OnlyFans towards the end of our relationship. And I remember saying to her, like, it was so conflicted because I was, I was like, I make a lot of money. And for her, she, was, she wanted purpose. It, it was more than money. It was just, she wanted purpose. She wanted to be doing something. And I was just like, what, is, do you want to, like, I, I just didn't get it. So I was just like, what is it? You just want to buy certain things? Like, what is it? And it was so conflicting to me because me at that point, I felt like it was almost disrespectful to me. That kind of ended up with like how we, we broke up. Um, I kind of still have the same philosophy, though, I'm going to be honest with you. And, and I guess it's if I met you before you did it. Now, if I met you when you're already doing it and I'm telling you to stop, I think that's like... How could you like a girl who's already doing it? Well, you got to give me, you got to, if you're telling me to stop, what are you going to do to make me stop? That's my outlook. Like, if I'm with somebody and they know Is I it only monetary-wise that you do it? Um, It's mostly monetary-wise, yeah. I, like I said, if I would have never gotten that airborne accident, I would probably still be in the military. You know how much I was making in the military? How much? 35000 a year. Mm, wow. That can't do nothing for nobody. Well, people at that time you probably thought it was decent. Even well, yeah, you, when you I live was a, a more teenager, expensive life. Yeah, when yeah. I, listen, when I went to basic training and I left with my little two thousand dollars that I made when I was there, I thought I was so up. I mm. was like, oh my god, I have two thousand dollars. I had never seen money like that before. Yeah. And so you know, I was able to make a good living off of it then. But this lifestyle that I've created for myself now, there's no way that anybody could come to me and say, "You got to stop what you're doing," unless you're gonna like. Make it make sense. I've okay. created a lifestyle where I can't, I'm, I'm not, no, that ain't, that's dead. Okay, so, so let's continue with the story real quick. So your husband at the time says, mm -hmm. hey, listen, I think you should start OnlyFans. Yeah, he was like, I think you should try it out. What's your reaction? Because like, I, I do think some, like, if I had told, um, if, let's go back 10 years. If I, I felt if I told the girl that I love, Hey, I think you should, you know, maybe at that time be like, oh, become a stripper. She would probably say, you're cool with other guys, like, looking at me and sexualizing me? Did I you think, think about it any type of way like that? I think I was a little bit caught off guard because he's very, he's very conservative otherwise. Like, if you were to meet him, you'd be like, there's no way. Like, I posted him a couple times and people were like, that's your baby father? I'm like, yeah, like, that's him. Like, um, and we get along great now, but... Yeah, he was like, you should start OnlyFans. I'll take your pictures. Like, I'll take the content for you, and you could just try it, see what happens. Like, I had quit my job. Remember to go see Pitbull. So we needed to do something quick. It's all your fault, Pitbull. <laughs> Pitbull, it's your fault, okay? Actually, first of all, it's not, okay? <laughs> I love Pitbull, and he could do no wrong, okay? But so that's how I started. So really, it's all thanks to Pitbull, for real. It's thanks to Pitbull. So you, you start taking pictures. You open up OnlyFans. Yep. What's the reaction to it? It's it goes viral. Like does and, it? Me and my uh, baby daddy even did a tape together. So you guys do like a sexual tape? We did one, and he was like, "I'll never do it again." <laughs> okay, so you, now you have to explain this to me because what people normally think about, and I, and I tell everyone, especially women, who you know, it's been a couple of years since OnlyFans has been around. I would tell a, a woman right now who's 18 or 19, you could look really attractive. If you're about to start an OnlyFans, it's more important than your looks. It's actually all about marketing. And if you have it's a no- thousand marketing. It's a thousand percent marketing. It's a thousand percent marketing. So how did you go viral? Yeah, you probably were attractive, but, but what platform did you have to go viral? So I, I was really popping on Reddit. Reddit? Reddit. Yeah, and you can look at some of the old threads, like they're still all up. And, um, and I just wanna like make a disclaimer, if there are women or men, that are like young and listening to this or 18, 19, whatever, OnlyFans should never be your first option. Okay. I don't believe that. Um, like I said, I, I went and I did the military shit. It didn't work out the way I wanted to, so I tried something different. But I do think that, you know, you should you shouldn't jump right into sex work. 
I, I, I wouldn't want that for people that I love. Why not? Because it can be very mentally draining. Because there's a lot of people that don't understand it, right? Like you were you were telling me like from the male perspective, like, oh, I would never want my woman to X, Y, and Z. And it's like, there's a lot of men who don't think that way, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very like free-spirited person. And I, I think that we need to respect the way that people think about things. I, I, can, I can disagree with you, but I can respect your thought process yeah. and vice versa. You don't have to understand everybody's views on shit. You know, recently and, you know, I'm glad you even made that disclaimer because so recently, um, which was my audience and everybody been bringing to my attention, like we've seen a few adult entertainers, they're overdosing. Mm. And I think people are starting to think about the psychological, you know, you know, just hurdles that they have to go through because people see the people see the great things. Right. You know, you're turned up, you're lit. Everybody's retweeting you, like your, 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 your whatever sexy thing you post on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But are you genuinely happy? Are you self-medicating? Are you maybe abusing some substances to get through things? And I think that's where people are now saying, oh, no. Hey, this OnlyFans era, of course, it might be lucrative, but there are effects. Do you get what I'm saying? A thousand percent. And I think that with that there's effects to to every line of work you feel me like i know people who struggle with alcoholism that have a normal nine to five True. and 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 that's the thing is like i'm so thankful for the military because i used to sit and read the comments that people would say about me but i'm so mentally strong that like i don't even that doesn't even phase me everyone that's hating on me could never get near me Wait, you when me? you were in the military, like... No, no, no. I'm saying because of the military. Okay, yeah, yeah. When I read these hate comments okay, about yeah. me doing sex work or me doing whatever I be doing, it's people hating on me that are that could never get near me. Why Why would I give a fuck what you think about me? You feel me? Like, I don't give a fuck. I'm doing what I want to do with my life while I'm here. I would hope that you do the same. I hope that what you're doing is what you want to do. I hope it makes you happy. I hope it fulfills you. You feel me? But I'm not about to sit up and talk about, oh, this dude's just online streaming all day. He's not doing nothing. Else. Like, I'm not hating. Yeah. What does that do? Like, how is that productive? I don't understand. Okay. So you start posting these pictures. And I guess, you know, because at this point, what I genuinely feel in how you, I don't think you're just doing this as, oh, this is the way I can make money. I think you enjoy what you do. I do. I, I, I think it brings some type of fulfillment. And I think that's what I'm asking. So you get suggested to, hey, start OnlyFans and third. You kind of indulge. You kind of go viral a little bit. Right. Um, how do you then start to interpret all the reactions you're getting? Because I can imagine it's probably a little bit mixed. Some people yeah. might be like, yo, that's how you're doing this. And some people might be like, yo, this is fire. So you know you know how Reddit is like mm -hmm. Twitter on steroids. Facts. So, so if you post the right thing, you can go crazy viral on Reddit. And that's T for like content creators, streamers, whatever you're doing. Reddit is really the golden ticket. For real, um, it, it, it's it, it's like a it's like a hub of like the people who really move and shake shit, right? And if you get popping there, it, it kind of filters and, out to yeah. And shit. people right. on Reddit are going there for a specific reason. You know, Twitter is giving you news about the world. It's giving you porn. It's giving you all kind of shit, athlete shit. Reddit, you ha you have to go on there for a specific reason, and that's why. Like, if you go on there and you type in the right hashtags, your shit can really pop off, and that's what happened with mine. Mm. And I was seeing money that I'd never seen before. So I'm like, okay, I'm able to provide for my family. Explain. So, so you're getting 3200 uh, or 3500 for the year in the military. Um, did you, do you make even 5000 like for, for the month when you're on OnlyFans? What? I cleared that. Mm. Don't lowball me. I no, I don't. No, no. This <laughs> don't is you starting it. out. This is where you starting out. I, I started out. I posted one video. I was clearing 10K a month. Really? I had never seen money like that before. Okay. And so I'm like, what? At this point, I'm like 21, 22. Um, I'm able to provide for my family. Like, my husband kept his day job just because he likes Yo, to work. Yo, so you should start out like this. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I was I was happy with 10K a month. I could do whatever I wanted, for real. 10K a month is a lot of fucking money. In my eyes, that, that Compared was Compared to 35K a year, yeah, a what? I was, I was hitting. So, um... 
And mind you, I also had a personal training company, same yeah. time. So I had my personal trainer certification that I got when I was in the military, and I had my own personal training business. So I was training clients via internet. So I was like giving them their meal plans and their workout plans, you know, on the internet. And I had hella clients doing that too. So simultaneously, I was I was making about fifteen thousand a month between both platforms. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that that can t- so this is like twenty twenty you said right? Yeah, twenty twenty into twenty twenty one. Okay. Time frame. That happens, and I think notoriously things probably hits on an uptick and probably a, a upturn when somehow we start seeing you at least initially pictured with Freddie Gibbs. How do you meet Freddie Gibbs? I could imagine at that time you're if you're if you're kind of getting lit like that on OnlyFans social media, probably a bunch of rappers are hitting you up. Athletes, they're, they're the worst. They probably all yeah, in your DMs. Yeah, so that's actually how it started. So during the COVID time, I don't know where you were during COVID, but yeah. in Texas we were locked down. We couldn't go nowhere. Really in Texas? Yes, we were out of there. Like I was working out outside my house, and that was like the most freedom I got all day. Um. So it was me, my husband, our three-year-old daughter, and I was just, we were getting sick of each other. Oh, you're still living with your husband we're, at the time. We're fighting. We're, we're, we're needing our space. You know, that as humans, you need your space, and we didn't have that. So it got to a point where, like, things were getting ugly between us, and um, that was around the time I got my first athlete in my DM. <laughs> and remember, I told you I was green. So when I got an athlete DM, you I thought see I was that her. Blue t- I was like, ooh, like I'm really that bitch for real, and I am. But yo, you, you seen know. that blue check? And I know. Let me say this: I was tweaking. Yo, <laughs> was anytime tweaking. a girl gets her first blue check, she's beefing with her man the same day because all of a sudden, no matter anything he says, it to was her, like we were so already beefing, and then I got that. I was like, I'm out. So, who's yeah, athlete? I got my shout out, Damien. That's all I'm gonna say. Shout out, Damien. We're homies. Damn. Lillard? No. I was about to say. Shout out Damien. He knows who he is. Anyway, so. Yo, who's Damien? Figure it out it right now. It doesn't matter. Listen. Okay, so I get the DM. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 I'm a little messy. I'm sorry. We got to do it. Are you, do- like, listen, I'm a dude. And when I see relationships between women and men, I always, I, I hit the salary look up. Do you hit the salary look up? Come on now. No, I, I don't what? do that. I definitely Googled him to see who he was. Gotta I didn't see know the what contract. He, did. he didn't have, like, no pictures up. So Maybe I was like, okay, drafted. I see what he does for a living. Okay, whatever. He was in my city. He was like, I'm in, I'm in your city. And I'm. he was like playing dice or like gambling or something. And I'm like in my bed, husband's next to me. And I'm like, man, this is bad. Like I knew I shouldn't have been doing it, you know? Wait, wait are you trying to link up with him or are you just like? Not the same day. We Damn. made plans for the following day. Damn. I know. And 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 my baby daddy knows about it now. Like yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you're truthful because water under the bridge, yeah. Women will lie to death. Let me tell you. Oh, well, I you lied. Know, what, what, I definitely oh. lied. I told him I was going to my homegirl's house. Oh, because the there was no girl. other way. Remember I told you it was COVID. Yeah, so yeah, it's not yeah. like I could say hey, I'm going to the mall. Like yeah, I yeah. had to really make it make sense. So I was like, I'm going to my homegirl's house. And I went to her house after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I still went to her house. So when you pulled up on him. Like, obviously, and by the way, you know, I, I think people understand, like, men were impulsive. We, we chase pussy. Women, if she's starting to link people, she's probably at her wit's end already. Like, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. It's, it's about that time. So I linked with him, whatever, and um, I made up my mind that, like, that wasn't a relationship I wanted to stick. Yeah. Don't you already know? No, no, I, I, I know, I know. It's just, you I'm just thinking have to like, explain. No, no, okay. I, I'm thinking like the husband. I'm like, ah, oh, he's. It's, it, it's, yeah, it is what it is. Well, was he fucking anybody on the side? No, Probably. I was asking him to. I was asking him like bring bitches home, but he was like not with that. Wait, you were asking him to bring. Yeah, the- I very no, you quickly. Weren't. I I could call him right now. I very quickly was like, hey, like you think you can find some like women, like because I was getting into that lifestyle. Remember, I told you I started OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I just don't really know if I'm into that. I'm like, okay, whatever. Well. I was trying to like spice up the relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And um, So you're down for threesomes and all that shit with him. Yeah, I was down, but he wasn't trying to do that. So How are you um, gonna set you up into the life and not really be with what might come with? I don't think that he knew how fast shit was gonna blow up for me. I don't think I did either. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. so like I said, met with the football player, we hit it off, we're still homies to this day, whatever. And um that kinda I always Which tell football him, player in Texas, Damien, we got it. 
There's no. It does, I never said he played for Texas. <laughs> well, but he came to Texas. It's all okay. It was all like, season. Why do you care about that more yeah, than the care. other shit? You know, no, no. Listen, I like having <laughs> names, <laughs> details. What's listen. going on? Okay. All right. Okay, cool. So, so that happens. Yes. And, um, and that, I always tell him. Did, did you come you. clean to him? Who? Um, your husband be like, hey, listen. Yeah, I told him. I was like, listen, this is not gonna work. Like instantly. No. Okay. I had to play months. my cards right. You always okay. got to play chess and not checkers. Damn. So, I hope no girls are watching this. This is going to inspire a whole well, bunch of... Well, you said you had a hella male audience. So okay, you put them on game. Good, good. But, um, so I always tell him thank you. I always tell Damien thank you because he's kind of the reason that I, I exited that relationship. And not not in a bad way, but like, remember I told you I met dude when I was 18. I never really lived yet. You feel me? So, uh, we separated and I kept doing OnlyFans. And, um... My shit just kept getting bigger and bigger, and I started doing like more and more. Like I, when I first started OnlyFans, I was like, I'm never gonna show my nothing. I'm just gonna take sexy pictures in like lingerie. <laughs> it, but but, but, it, but I got more comfortable with this myself and what I was doing. Let me ask you a question. And it, all that. Were you enticed by the attention, or was it just a comfortability? Okay, so thing? let's start off by saying. Most people love attention. Yes. Right? If you go on, on your fucking live stream and nobody comes in, <laughs> you're going to feel fucked up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You that's know what I mean? True. And the more people you see coming in, you're like, yeah, like they're fucking with it's what like I'm validation. talking about. Right. So, yes, I love the attention. I'm not above saying that. You feel me? I would be fucked off if nobody was buying my content. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I must look fucked up or something's not right. Something, yeah. You know? So, when I'm seeing my numbers do what they're doing... And I'm seeing my hard work pay off because it is getting up, getting dressed, looking cute every day. That's hard work. I don't care what nobody says about that shit. It, it's work. And um, I'm seeing the fruits of my labor. And I'm like, okay, this makes sense for me. And then, like I said, we separated. So we weren't splitting bills no more. I was paying for everything on my own now. So I had to get my numbers up. I had a daughter. I had, you know, shit I had to handle. Um, where Freddie comes into play is um, I'm in Atlanta with my older sister. And um, I get a DM from Freddie Gibbs. And I had never heard of him before. And like I said, it's not my demographic. I'm a Pitbull fan. I wouldn't know who Freddie Gibbs is. I get it. Um, people always think I'm throwing shade when I say that. But I'm like, no, I really had never heard of him. It, uh, like, a Pitbull fan won't even know academics. I get right. It. <laughs> I get so it. I was like, ask my sister, because she's more into the hip-hop culture. I'm like, who's Freddie Gibbs? She's like, oh, he's a rapper. She was like, actually, he had a show out here a couple years ago. And um, I was with him on his tour bus. Like, I was smoking with him. I'm like, oh, okay, so if you were kicking it with him, he must be kind of cool. You know, she's like, yeah, give him a chance. And I'm like, well, fuck, his name's Freddie. And my first baby daddy named Fred. Oh, shit. So I'm like, man, I'm out of there. I'm like, I can't with this Fred shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't with this shit. She's like, nah, sis, just give him a chance. He's real cool. I'm like, okay, bet. So I responded to him, and... um. Women do that before they hit the response button? Like, like kind of almost like, hey. I was trying to feel, feel him out. Yeah. I had never heard of this man before. I went to his page. I saw that he did music, but I had never heard the music. Um, so I was trying to kind of familiarize myself, you know, with who, who, who was trying to talk to me, mm. you know. And um, he was like, yeah, I stay in L.A. Uh, next time you're here, like, hit me up. And so my sister had a best friend that was living in L.A. at the time. So we had gone to see her like two weeks later. I was like, hey, like I'm in LA. Like, what what's up? And so we kicked it. He came and picked me up. We went to this like chicken spot. And uh that's kind of how we met is on Instagram. Oh shit. So that's the first kind of like date type of thing. Yeah, I guess you could say it was a date. What does he pick you up in? He picked me up in a Corvette. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Bring, brings you to a chicken spot. We're not talking about like like church's chicken. Like no, no, nah, no. Nah. It was it was a chicken spot, and it was you know it was sit down eating. Nah, they had just closed, and the the dudes brought the chicken out to us. Oh, takeout, perfect. Yeah, so so I go back to the hotel. Out. We went. No, we went to his crib. He took me right to his house. Really, NDA. And that was kind of no NDA. What? Uh, uh. That was kind of weird to me that he took me right to his house because I'm very protective of my energy, and I would never just take somebody to my crib. Especially where my kids reside, there's no way. But I just thought, hey, he's comfortable with me, like, you know, whatever. And um, that's kind of how we met. And it's so funny because people love to, t like, his fans love to be like, 
oh, well, nobody knew who you were before Freddie Gibbs. And I'm like, well, he knew who I was before him. Like, he yeah. messaged me. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Why do you think he messaged you? Like, what did he see? It Was he just, like, a, a fan just, of your content? I don't know if he was a fan of my content. I, I think he just saw me on Instagram. I have no idea. Uh, but but after that day, we kind of established, like, a friendship. Uh, I wasn't, it wasn't like I would text him every day after that. But it was like, okay, we hooked up, like... I'm going about my way. You go about your way. But it was always like, hey, how you doing? Like every couple weeks, like we would check in with each other. Yeah. Um, and that was for like a year. And then I found out that he got jumped in Prime 112 in Miami. Oh, so you weren't with him at that point? No, I wasn't with him then. Oh. Um, Th- that was always a hazy then. situation. So uh, for the audience, listen, um, Freddie, who is, you know, he, his, he's wrote a lot of uh, um, checks with his mouth that he can't cash, okay? And one of the situations, which was a long-lasting situation, was with him and Jim Jones. Allegedly, they ran to each other in Prime 112. It happened to be a sort of bloody situation, but there was a altercation. That happened, it was, I remember hearing about it. You know who I heard about it from first? Vlad. Vlad says, oh, okay. Act. I know someone there that confirms this 100%. But he never said anything about it. And to, to, to the credit of Jim at first, because at first Jim didn't say anything, then he started alluding to it. I was like, did this happen? Right. How did you know that happened? So my sister, she called me. I, I don't remember what city I was traveling home from, but I was in the airport. And she called me. She was like, hey, did you hear about Freddie? And I was like, no, because, you know, we were just friends at this point. She goes, I heard he got jumped in Miami. Like, you should call and check on him. I'm like, damn. So I'm seeing these blogs, like, talk about it. So I send him a text. I'm like, hey, are you okay? I heard, like, something happened. He immediately FaceTimes me. And he's like, I'm good. Like, you don't see no, no scratches on me. Like, I'm straight. Like, they can't do nothing to me. I'm untouchable. I'm like, okay. Well, maybe maybe it's just, like, fake news. I don't know. Mm. You know? When he FaceTimes you, you're not seeing, like, one of his eyes a little puffy. Like no, that. his gonna, face looked totally looks good. fine. I, I don't know what happened at Prime 112 because I wasn't there. But 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 um, when he FaceTimes you, 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 you didn't look at him and be like, bro, are you sure you're good? No, like, no, no. I, I took his word. I was like, okay, you're straight. You look you look fine. Like, I was just check, I was tapping in as a friend. Mm. That's it. it um, clearly, it became more. Do you feel like you tapping in maybe at that moment um, of his life, which was probably a low point, you know, even though he might have been capping to you, like, oh, no, we're all good. Right. He probably took a little bit more liking into you because I know when people tap in and be like, yo, I know everybody's against you right now, but I fuck with you. Are you sure you're good? Like, anything you need? Like, that person I, I always... Yeah, I don't think that that was it for him. You know what I think it was? Why? So it had been... Remember I told you we were friends for about a year. That happened. I had switched my whole look up. Like when I fa- when he FaceTimed me, I like shaved all my hair off. I had like that cute. Oh, so you had hair cut. when you first fucked with him? Yeah, I had like a cute little pixie cut, like a, oh. a black little pixie cut. And um, I had shaved my hair into like a blonde buzz cut. And I had just got my teeth done in Colombia. Like I had gotten a couple things done. And he was like, Whoa, you look different. Like you look good. Like I think it was that. And um, so after I tapped in with him, um, that became like more of daily exchanges like how are you what's up when are we gonna link type shit mm. and um he was about to go tour europe shortly after that and he was like hey i want you to come to europe with me and i had never been to europe so i'm like yeah i'm down you know um and that's we went to europe did that whole thing he had a few shows out there and that was like a really fun time what's the chemistry and vibe with with you guys in we immediately hit it off. Um, he has this way of like making you feel like he's that dude, but what then the mean? actions just they don't line up. Like I don't know how to explain it. He makes you feel very comfortable. Like he's a very like he's a protector. Um, like nobody wants to fuck with him. Like nobody's he thinks he's him. Like for real, and so he makes you really believe that. Like I, when I was with him, I really felt protected. You like, probably thought, yo, up th- until a certain point, yo, these niggas, these niggas is running from him. Right. He's, I was like, yeah, he's the big yeah. bad wolf. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, no, he's not. 
So, 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 so Europe goes well. I'm guessing, like, do, do you think there was maybe an allure or maybe some type of lust where, you know, you're this very sought after sexual figure online who's a sex worker and he might have, I don't know, maybe some weird sexual fantasies that he's like, yo, this woman, not only am I so attracted to her because I've probably either seen her content or now I'm fucking FaceTime with her and she looks so beautiful. I just want to do like some freaky sh I just want to just fuck her all day long. You know what I mean? Because as dudes, it's Yo, like. Yo, you're out of there. No, I'm serious. <laughs> like, ooh, what is it? Because I'm going to be honest with you. Like, every dude that I know people watching this, y'all going to try to cap, but you know, that one girl, just think of the name. Shit. I know a lot of y'all, some of y'all even say Ice Spice. If, if y'all even say, if y'all got it, one name in mind, y'all say, man, if that girl. All I would want to do with her all days is fuck her all goddamn day. And if you know she's a freak, right? Some of y'all do for Ruby Rose too. Stop it. Y'all know it's true. Y'all like, man, what? Like, y'all just want to have experiences with that woman. And it felt like uh, on the outside looking in that Freddie was a fan of yours. Like, he, he, he was a fan of you as like a sexual being. Of course, he fucked with you too as a person. Mm -hmm. but, but, but that probably was what enticed and like yo i gotta keep this girl always around me mm. yeah i could see that like when my first scene went viral on pornhub it was up for 72 hours it did 5.5 million views Whoa. um and who was that with some like other creator he wasn't a big creator though it, well, how did it go viral or why the algorithm people just like the title the the what is that called at the beginning of a video um, when you put a YouTube video, the 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 thumbnail, the thumbnail, yeah. So all that you was like busting wide open type shit, like no, <laughs> no, no, I got it. Like why are you going viral? Like like what? Are, like what are Look you doing? Look at me, academics. No, no, no. no I, I don't I, have to tell you why I'm going viral. No, no, hold on. Come I, no, on. No, yeah, but wait, remember this is porn now, so you can look amazing, but maybe you can't fuck. Maybe you can't suck no dick. Ask about me. No, no. Well, obviously <laughs> you can. Like we know this now. But what I'm saying is that. Uh, like at, at that point in your mind, why are you going viral? Or do you? I was totally shocked. I had no idea. Oh, you had no. Okay. One of my fans on OnlyFans DM me talking about, "Hey, I saw your video on Pornhub. It's amazing." I'm like, "Huh? How did you see it? I just uploaded it like a couple days ago. Never promoted it. Nothing." So I sent the link to Freddie. I was like, "Look, my video is going viral. This is before we were dating." He was like, "I'm so proud of you. You're so independent. I love that you have your own lane." That's what he told me. And I was like, "Wow, I really, I really fuck with." That he fucks with my job. Did that feel genuine? It, it honestly did. It honestly did feel genuine. It so, did feel genuine. So, so this, you know, I think a lot of people have the misconception that you blindsided him with maybe your career or maybe what you want to do. I think a lot of people think that I just started doing porn when I got pregnant. As like an out of spite type thing. But I always did porn. So before you guys officially dated, he knew you were doing porn and he would tell you he's proud of you. Yes, he knew what I did. Wow. He knew. And it's so funny because when he first picked me up that day, like I had seen a couple pictures on his Instagram that he was like had a microphone or whatever. Um, and my sister told me he was a rapper. But when I asked him outright what he did, he was like, oh, I play baseball. Or, oh, I do this. I do that. He would never tell me, like, he's he a rapper. He would never say he's a rapper. No, he why didn't want to that? tell me that. I, I have no fucking idea why. But Maybe I was he was always... trying to throw you off, like, I don't want you to, like, be like a groupie. So I'm not going to tell you what I really do. I was always genuine about my career. And he always supported it until he didn't. So you're telling him, hey, I'm an adult entertainer. I do scenes with other men. Yeah, he knew all that. I did that while we were dating. Did, he knew. Did, did, did he ever say at a point, hey, uh... I don't, I, I don't want to, like, I want to He got to, to a point where, remember I told you I was I was offered that porn deal. I was offered a big porn deal. And um, I remember, I can't remember what city we were in, but he we were having, like, a, a conversation on the bed, and he was like, I really, I just don't think that I'm okay with it no more. Like, doing the boy-girl scenes. I'm like, damn, like, why all of a sudden when I'm about to, What like, time frame up? is this? Is this after, because. This because is before the Buffalo situation. This is before that. Yeah, it was like probably a month or two before. Okay, so so so, so yeah, let, let's get back into the uh, chronological. So you call him, hey, are you good? We seen some stuff. Prime one twelve. He's like, no, I'm good. Look at my face. I'm right. straight. Blah blah. He asked you to hang out. He's like, he's realizing you're looking like real good. You got a little changes done. Okay, cool. He wants to link up. You guys link up. You guys go to Europe, right? Go to Have Europe. a great old time. 
Um, do you guys get in a relationship there or is it when you get back? No, we're we're in a relationship there. Okay. And he keeps making it a point, and I don't know why I didn't catch on to this shit while we were together. He keeps making it a point like I want to go viral. I want to go viral. And I'm like, I know how to go viral. Wait, what do you mean he's saying he wants to go viral? Like because, he because wants here's the, the blogs to be talking about us. That's what he wants. Like I, looking back, mm-hmm. it's given like PR type vibes. You know, because because okay, this is confusing because if let you know a rapper, let me make it make sense. Ahead. So, like I said, I met up with him in Europe. I'm gonna break it down Barney style. I met up with him. The first city we met was Amsterdam. Um, he had like 40 roses for me, and I had never. The only other dude that had ever given me flowers was my husband. So I was like kind of taken aback by the fact that he showed up with 40 roses. And he also had this paper and this pen. He was like, "I want you to write down some shit that I want to work on, like us together." He was like, I want to get a house in Texas. That's kind of game. I ain't going to lie to you. That's kind of game. He's like, I want to get a house in Texas. I want to get you an electric car. He's like, I want to I redo the Kanye and Amber photo shoot. And I was like, I don't want to redo the Kanye and Amber. That's been done. And like Amber, I fuck with her really heavy. And I don't want anything I do to seem like I'm trying to copy or take away from what she got going on. You feel me? So um, I was already getting a lot of comparisons to her because I had the blonde bus cut too. And she, everybody knows she started that shit. Yeah. But when she talks about it, her look, she's like, that look is for my fans. Like she loves when, when bitches be doing that same shit. But I was like, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do the Kanye Amber shit. I think that's the type of vibe he was on. He was very like trying to, he loved the porn star rapper look. Mm. He loved that. And and it, and do, it's crazy because his think fans he loved, loved it? it. Do you think he loved it because he loved you or because at that point he was looking at you guys or just looking at like an image that he feels was readily consumable by an audience? I think that he had genuine love for me, but I think it was more about what it looked like to other people. Wow. Um, looking back, right? I didn't yeah. know all this while we were together. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been with him. But... Looking back, I do think that it was more of like a a look that he was trying to portray, an ego thing. Um and and I had I had that list and I tore it up by now, you know, cuz none of it ever happened, but um I thought that was kind of weird. Like why do we have to make a to-do list? Why can't we just live? But but I told him, I was like if you want to go viral, I'll make you go viral. You know, I was I was carrying him on my back in Europe. Like we were in London. Yeah. And I had him on my back, like doing a piggyback ride. Yeah. I, I, seen I was like, we could post this on TikTok. It's going to go up. It had like four million views. And I was like, I, I posted a video of me carrying him over my shoulder. Six million views. I was like, I can make you go viral. He saw that. Like he saw that I knew how to manipulate the algorithm and, and get people interested in our relationship. You know? Yeah. yeah. And his fans... When we were together, they loved that I did porn. They were like, oh, my God, Freddie's with a porn star. Like, And then all of a sudden, that shit went south. Everybody's like, well, he left you because you're a porn star. <laughs> like, Pick a side. I, I thought the sentiment only changed after the Buffalo incident. You, you're saying no. You're saying there was a porn company that came in with an offer. Right. Um, if he's been so supportive, he's having you write to-do lists, hey, let's do A, B, and C. Why would he feel differently if a porn company wanted to give you? I don't know. I, I, so when we were together, I think I think it was more so like I was before the deal. Right. I was at a state where I was like, maybe I should do something different with my life. Maybe I should try another avenue because I was getting real comfortable with the porn shit. But when I get comfortable with something, I want to challenge. So I'm like, what else can I do to kind of. Spice life up a little bit more for me. By the way, when you guys are now together after the Europe trip, are you still doing boy girl scenes? Yeah. Are you telling him you're doing yep. boy girl scenes? What's his demeanor towards you doing boy girl scenes? He's like, I knew your job when I got with you. That's it. Verbatim. Verbatim. So he's not like, hey, listen. He's uh, very understanding, and 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 that's what drew me to him because I was like, wow, like, like you were saying in the beginning, not many men can get down with that. So I was like, wow, he really don't give a fuck about what I got going on. He's letting me do me. I'm letting him do him. That's fire. That's the dynamic that I would want in a relationship. Regardless of if I did porn or not, I'm going to do me, you do you. You feel me? This is going to sound like a a ridiculous question, but like, you know, most normal men would ask, or not normal, people not in the industry would ask this. Is that considered like an open relationship at that point? Like, because could he go outside and go fuck someone else? I always said that he could, but he never, 
Like, he, no shade. <laughs> he was only pulling bitches when he was with me. And he know that. What? Yeah, he know that. He know that. He going to watch this, too, and he going to know that. But that's that's real life. Like, you can ask anybody in his camp. When I'm with him, all the girls are flocking to. I have this demeanor and look about me that, like, people love. It's not on no cocky shit because I'm very humble. Yeah. But, like, people are naturally drawn to me. Boys, girls, whoever. So I would always tell him, hey, my only my only request is to protect my sexual health because I'm I'm a porn star. I can't work if you give me some. True. I was like, I'll never bring you home nothing because I don't I don't work with anybody, hook up with anybody with no test. You feel me? I'm very. You got to be that way. You should be that way even if you're not a sex worker. You yeah. You need to be you know on your shit. And I told him that's my only request. Like if you want to go hook up with a girl, that don't matter to me. But make sure you don't bring nothing home. You feel me? So why do you think he was he was feeling differently about that porn offer? Did you, did you feel like he didn't want you to? I don't know. Win? I don't know if it was like you me- like you mentioned maybe the internet's comments getting to him or or what. But he just came to me. He was crying, and he was like, "I just really don't what want do you to do crying? this no more." Like crying. Like, tears were coming out of his eyes. No. I'm but, done with you. I'm telling you what happened. He's super gangster. He's not crying. He was crying. He wasn't, like, dry heaving, sobbing, but he had tears coming out of his eyes. He's, hey. The relationship was like that, where we're like, you know, he's that emotional. He was emotional. Say, hey, listen. Yeah, he was emotional. He was like, I don't know if I want you doing this no more. And I remember just wiping his little. It's all going to be all right. Really? I was like, I won't do it. I won't do I literally said, I won't do boy-girl scenes no more. I'll just do girl-girl scenes. And I don't, my fans don't even really fuck with that for real. They're not trying to see that. I saw a text message that you had put out, and I thought you made it up. And it, it was... Of course you did. Well, well, I mean, just because... <laughs> of course you did. No, no, no. no it's, it's not because of you or thinking you're a bad person or anything. Is that a lot of us fans, we buy into the perception of an image, especially when it comes to rap. So when... We had seen, I mean, personally, I, I knew that was real. But the the person who wants to believe the rapper was like, that got to be fake. Right. And it was him saying, hey, listen, it was it was him basically talking about his mental space and how unhappy he was based on everything going on online and how he felt it put him in a tough position. And that's not what usually people see when they see him tweeting. Right. When they see him tweeting, they see him joking, they see someone who is unbothered, unfazed, and is just with the bullshit. Right. And then you showcase a different side of him, and even with you saying, oh, yeah, no, nah, he was he's crying to me asking, hey, listen, could you stop doing boy-girl scenes? Right. You get what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I know him very well. And um, I I even picked up on it when we were dating. Like, if he was having a bad day or we were arguing, that's when he posts the most memes on his Instagram story. Why would like that be? When you, tap, when you tap that story button and then it's hella shit one after the other, that's when he's having his hardest day. Why? I think that he's trying to prove that he just, like, everything's funny. Like, he wants to put it, he want to make it seem like everything's funny and everything's a joke. But when you see hella story after story about some bullshit meme shit, he's a funny guy. Everybody knows that nobody's taking that from him. But that's when he's having his worst day. I've seen it. I'm like, how? I remember looking at his Instagram story. Like, how is he posting all this? And he just got done having a three hour migraine. All lights off. All nobody. Everybody quiet. Like, how, this is not making sense. I was picking up on that. Mm. This is after we already. Well, let's let's keep it in order. So he but, come yeah. he comes to you says, please stop doing that. You, you oblige. Yeah. Are, are you then kind of looking at him like, yo, bro, this is kind of part of the brand that I already have that you knew I already have. Right. This is sacrificing maybe some of the income I can make. This is going to hurt me. What is uh, like, what's the point of this? Are, are we doing this because we're going to have a family? Are we doing this because we're going to get married? Are we doing this because you're going to subsidize what I'm going to lose? Are you right. thinking like that? So, well, like I told you, I've always done everything on my own. So... Even when I was flying out to see him in different cities, I was getting all my own flights. No way. I promise. I can show you the receipts. They're on my email. Um, I didn't Is it have because a, you didn't ask? 
Yeah, I didn't ask. But also, should I have to? That's true. But I never had a problem doing it on my own because I've always done everything on my own. So when I was when he told me, I don't want you to do boy girl no more, I knew that I was going to take a huge pay cut. A huge pay cut. And I was like, damn, like how am I going to... I already have a daughter at home. I have this lifestyle that I've created for myself. I have well over $15,000 a month in bills. How am I going to maintain and even create residual income what can I do and I told him I was like I think I want to try acting like I, I've always dreamed of having a role like in Orange is the New Black or something I think I would eat that uh, shit fire. and I think I would be a really good actor and he was diving into the acting scene and I was like hey like I'm gonna stop doing boy girl are you able to help me in this in this realm in this acting world like are you able to help me He's like, yeah, I'll introduce you to, uh, you know, all these people, right? And it sounds promising because he's, at this time, he he had just finished up Down with the King, that movie that he did. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, he just did a movie. Like, he should be able to put me in position. Like, if you want me, like I said in the beginning, if you want me to stop, you got to make it make sense for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, you know, he was like, I'm going to do this show with Zach Fox. Like, we're going to write this show. I'm going to give you a main role. I'm like, this sounds great. Like, I'm going to be an actor, you know? Nothing ever happens. And I'm like, okay. I was like, hey, I think I want to do music. He's like, you can't do music. I do music. And I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> well, what the fuck am I, <laughs> like? Is, is, is he saying this because, like, who knows? He might be giving you, like, 10, 15 bands a month to hold down the bills. He's like, yo, baby, listen, let me do the money-making shit. I'm holding you down. Your bills are paid. You're living a great life. We're flying first class. We're jet setting everywhere. We're staying in fucking five stars. Out of there. I already told you I was paying for all my own shit. He never paid. He never paid for my shit. I never asked him. Buy you bags, jewelry, no. chains. No, my chain watches. Got he, so he's not doing anything. No. that you'd assume. No, what? he's not doing nothing. I'm. I'm genuinely. And people are going to call me naive and stupid and all that. I just have a pure heart. That's it. I have a pure heart. I love this person. I wasn't asking this person for nothing monetary. I was filling his fridge up with groceries at his house. And then I would leave back to Texas next day. Like, that's just the type of bitch I am. That's what I was doing. I was paying for all my own shit. I don't give a fuck who don't believe that either. You, you had said the only part I don't believe is uh, I don't believe you was paying his phone bill. Like, come on now. The niggas. He, you do believe that. He tweeting too much for you to pay, pay his phone bill. Like, I mean, I don't on. pay it anymore. But yeah, that he was, was on my. Like a motherfucker. He like, was you got to have a plan after. He was on my shit. I could show you my phone plan right Why now. Why though? Because you I, know, I'm still paying for his fucking iPad to this day. Why? No, I no. can't take it off my account, dog. Oh, 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 all right. Well, it's not why you're doing this. Why doesn't he, because as a man, I, not, I do feel a way for women's paying a bill for me. He, he, I guess he don't. I guess he don't. And that's something that you got to question his masculinity because he don't give a fuck. Do you think he was using you then? I think to an extent. I think for like the, the relationship, the dynamic, the way it looks. But I also think that he's a serial narcissist. And I think that I was his supply at that time. He had just had a baby before we got together that I didn't even know about. And it didn't change the way I felt about him. I was like, oh, remember I told you there was that time we didn't talk for a while. And we were just friends. He had a little, he had a baby. So by the time we linked back up, he had like a six month old. Was there baby mama drama with you and maybe his other baby moms? I had never met her yet. Mm. I, had, I hadn't met her. I think I see um, one of them send like some message to you. They weren't too nice. Yeah, his, his other son's mom wasn't very fond of me. And I see why now. Um, in the moment, I didn't understand why she wasn't fucking with me. But I see why now. Because she already knew. Everything I'm telling you about Freddie right now, she already knew. So, from her experience with him. So, I'm, I'm, I'm new. I'm green. I'm just meeting him, whatever. I'm touring Europe with him. She's like, damn, me and my son are here. He hasn't given us nothing. Like, and you're just out with him, touring the world. I didn't realize... You feel me? Yeah. I understand now. Um, she told me she was like, and it this one this one really crushed my ego when she said this. She said he only brought you to Europe because he has a rape case over there and he can't fuck with no Europe bitches. That's the only reason he brought you out there. And I'm what? like, and I'm like, no, he brought me out here because he really fucks with me. 
Oh, and I'm looking you, back uh, and I'm like, damn, like, is that really what it was? Is that what it was? It could have been. So it looks like you, you, you're kind of in a situation that you have, you know, j- just going from your story, like you have the best um, prospects and hopes that it is going to work out. But quickly you're realizing things are changing or things aren't how it seems. You're paying for things, not that you care, but it's, it, it doesn't seem to be um, it, it's not the road pay, paved with gold. <laughs> um, right. you're paying for things that that's a little bit out of the ordinary. He's kind of moving a little bit different. He's also questioning some of your career choices. It doesn't seem to be mutually supportive. And then somehow, you know, you're still moving around with him to some extent. Yeah. Somehow you get to Buffalo. Right. And yeah. You've been moving around with this guy who has been talking to you like he's the guy. He's untouchable. Right, right. All of these guys who have problems with him are suckers. If, you know, they're lucky they don't see him. Right. And you're believing this. Yeah, I'm believing it because I had known about the Prime 112 shit, but I had never been in no issue with him. What did he tell you? What did he tell you happened? He just said, like. These all these dudes want to be me like they can't fuck with me. So they mad about like just some bullshit. And did, I didn't know. Did he tell you about the altercation? Or no, he didn't really go into detail. And I didn't really ask because I was like, damn, I wasn't there. I don't really want I don't really want to ask. That's low-key embarrassing, yeah. you know? Um. So we do Europe. And we go back to the States for his stateside tour. We do like a show in New York, New York City. Well, mm-hmm. he did a show in New York City. And then he, Buffalo was next day. So we we did his show. And then we tour bus to Buffalo overnight. Hold on. Before before we get there, because it's very important to acknowledge, I remember the time period. A lot of people said, hey, listen, you just got into it with with with, with um, Jim Jones at Prime 112. I think that Maybe, was a year prior. Uh, but, but still, it's yeah. still linked. It's yeah. the first time you're showing up. Right, you right, probably right, right. shouldn't want to go to New York City. Mm-hmm. And I remember him announcing, we're going to New York City. Oh, he announced uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. are, are, are you are you with him saying, hey, are you sure you kind of want to be a little bit bold and daring with okay. this? So and this is no disrespect to nobody. Remember, I told you I'm a Pitbull fan. Yeah. yeah. I had never heard of Jim Jones. Okay. I, I didn't know what this beef was, who these people were. I was here with my man doing his show. And he's making you feel comfortable. And he's making me feel comfortable. Is he moving paranoid? Like, yo, baby, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up. No, he's gotta- not. He's moving gravy. Like he's smooth with it, and I, and that's another thing that's making me feel. He's not moving paranoid. Nothing like nothing, that. not yeah. in New York City. So, he really started acting weird when we got to Buffalo. But again, I had never heard of Benny the Butcher at this point either. By the so way, I'm like, did you know that people? he did the same thing for Buffalo by basically saying, "We're gonna be here. I didn't. We're know in that. town, no, and a I lot of people that. were like, you know, this is the place of the guy that you've been throwing shots at online.' So, let me just preface this by saying. I had never seen any tweet like the tweet, the tweet that caused the whole beef. Never saw it. Didn't know Benny the Butcher existed at this time. We've cleared that up since then. Um, Basically, I'm clueless. I'm not thinking that my dude has beef with nobody because he always said he was going to protect me and keep me safe. So why would he bring me to a place where he couldn't do that? You feel me? Yeah. So where he Are started acting security? weird. Yeah, we got security. How many security? Two. Okay. Uh, wasn't nearly enough. Well, well, you you would think if 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 there's reasonably you would think, and they were big guys. Decent. They were big guys. Um, I, I fucked with them. They were they were big guys. But um, so we tour. We take the tour bus to Buffalo from New York City overnight. So it's like a seven hour drive, and um, we wake up. We get there. We go to our hotel, and um, Freddie's like, "Hey, are you hungry?" And I'm like, yeah, I'm actually starving. Let's go get some food. I'm like, you want me to Uber something? I was like, yo, we just got off the tour bus. I really don't want to be in the car. You want me to Uber something, like, to the crib, to the hotel. So you were down to DoorDash or Uber some food, Uber eat some food? Yeah, I was down. And he was like, no, let's walk. He's like, there's a barbecue spot right down the street. We could walk. Yeah. And I was like, down the street? What you mean? Like, how far is it? He was like, it's three blocks. I was like, why do you want to walk, though? It was his idea. It was his idea to walk. 
Oh, I always, you see, I always, you see me, maybe I'm, I'm a misogynist. I always blame the woman. I'm like, You're she misog- probably, you are she misogynist. probably told him, let's go to this spot. You're I out wa- of there. Yeah. I, I want to be, I, I, I want to. It's okay. You, you got to, you got to want and don me. And, you know, as a guy, sometimes you're not trying to tell your girl, like, you know, I got ops out here because she going to call you <laughs> scary. Wait, you scared to go sit in public? Motherfucker, this is a wrong town to go sit in public. This is DoorDash no, no, town. This is, this is the real story. He wanted to walk. He wanted to walk. And I said, I even questioned him. I was like, why do you want to walk? And he was like, it's just three blocks. I was like, okay, we have our security, whatever. He goes, put your jewelry on. And I don't. No way. Stop he doing that. He told you. No, 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 no. Come on now. He <laughs> like, told you stop. put your jewelry on. Yes. Yes. And and if you look at the footage, I don't know. You've seen the video. Yeah, yeah. You replayed that shit thousands of times. A million times. times. You're right. So you know I was in those orange basketball shorts. Yes, I do. Caked up. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't trying to put jewelry on. I was in a casual vibe. Okay. I had a black crop top, basketball shorts, and slides. He's like, put your chain on. I'm like, huh? Why? He's like, just put it on. Okay. Put my chain on. And that's that G charm. That G yeah. charm chain. And um, so I'm used to... We're walking. We got the security. I'm used to his fans coming up to him and showing love wherever we're at. This was not the same. This was like, I was hearing his name. I was hearing like Freddie Gibbs, but I wasn't, there was no love. Nobody was coming up to us. It was like, I felt eerie. It was an eerie feeling. Walking three blocks. Yes. You And I'm looking at him and I'm like, do you feel safe? He goes, I feel safe anywhere. You actually say this. I asked him that. Yes. He he knows. He knows. He going, he going to watch this whole shit. I said, do you feel safe? He said, I feel safe anywhere. This is why you're walking. While we're walking. Hand so in is hand. that eerie that you're like, what the fuck? Yes. Uh-huh. I'm seeing I'm seeing people like, if I were to look that way, like 50 yards, like a group of, a group of guys just yeah. like staring us down. Like I'm seeing shit like that. And even me, I'm not from the streets at all, but I'm, I'm feeling like a weird type of vibe going on. And I'm like, okay. No one knew you guys were going there, right? I knew we were going there. Yeah, but, I don't know what anybody else but, knew. But, but like the guys you're seeing, like what the hell are these? Like, I don't know who they are. Yeah, but 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 it doesn't look like they know you guys are going to be there going to this place. They know who he is as we're walking. Oh, okay. I, I knew that off the top. That's the red. They flag. might not have known me, but they knew him. Mm. And they might have known. He, they might have not known where he was going, but they knew who he is. Right, which, and Buffalo is like a really small city, and I feel like. It's just a phone call. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I seen him here at whatever, whatever, you know? Um, so we get to the barbecue spot, Dino Barbecue. I would love to go back and actually enjoy my meal. But um Didn't I order? Yeah, we ordered. <laughs> like well, how long did you look at the menu? Come on now. <laughs> I looked at the menu, I got brisket off top. I'm from Texas. You feel okay. me? Um Freddie ordered like a margarita mm-hmm. and um, our plates were coming out. Like we had just got our food. But before we got our food, I went to the bathroom. I had yeah. to pee. I come back out about three minutes later, our food shows up. And um, is there any weird energy? Is there more people in the restaurant now than when you, you know, came the, in? The restaurant workers were a little weird. What do you mean? Like just they knew who he was, too. Really? Yeah. Like like it was like it's that. like that in Buffalo. For, toward him, yeah, like they they don't they don't fuck with him. Nah, that, no, 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 that's Benny. Benny must have Buffalo under because you know, respectfully, you know, nobody knows Freddie that much where everybody knows him, motherfucker. Well, they they, they must knew fuck with, because of that shit. Yeah, they must yeah. fuck with Benny so much they're like, this is his op. Yeah, Jesus. And, and Wait, how, how are they? Ah, like, like, what would you get that was a little off? Just like staring, whispering. Oh. Right. A little bit more than normal chatter. Like, this is a barbecue spot. Yeah. Give me my food and go. There shouldn't be no extra shit going on. Um, shit. So I'm eating. I take my first bite. Bending over, because I'm pulling the brisket apart. I look up, and it's like 30, literally 30 dudes come around the corner. Like, into the spot. It's like a group of 15 in the front, and then there's, like, dudes in the back, just, like, straggling. Just in case, you know? They all just stormed this place. Yeah, they come around. They came around the corner. So really, our security should have been at that corner because we don't have eyes around the corner. What's the security doing? Were they just eating too? They're eating too. 
They're out of there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's we're, one of those and we're at picnic tables. All eating. You saw the yeah, yeah. the setting. Yeah, we're yeah. at picnic tables. Yep. And um, the security was actually behind us. They should have been in front of us. True. There's so much wrong about that whole situation. But um, like I told you, I'm not from the streets, so I had never seen nothing like this before. I was terrified. What's what's the first thing that Freddie says to you? He doesn't say shit to me. What do, you, what, what do you notice in that's happening? You see the 30 dudes. Mm-hmm. Now things are probably played out and I'm probably you probably have replayed everything. In slow yeah, motion. you heard the story millions of times. It's, you know, he was told he's not supposed to be here. He's, you know, Benny told him, you know, you're not supposed to be here. And I, I look at Freddie like, what is he talking about? We're not supposed to be here. Like well, well, Benny wasn't there, though, right? Benny was there. He'll tell you he was there. Benny was there. Yeah. You're lying. You're out of there. No, I'm serious. So you Benny, heard the story. You no, no, know, I, you no, no, know. No, no, no. I heard the story, but I did not hear Benny was there. I heard Benny sent his peoples. So Benny's there, and Benny says, "No, you're not supposed to be here, bro." He said, "You know, you're not supposed to be here." And at that moment, I didn't know who I was looking at because remember, I hadn't heard of him yet before. And Benny Freddie showed up with thirty people. And Freddie's Yo, like, "Buffalo is really like that." No, they're they're like that. And I'm looking at Freddie like, "What do you mean we're not supposed to be here?" So you're confused. I'm mad confused. You dropped the brisket at this point. No, I didn't drop the brisket. I dropped my fork. Goddamn. But Freddie's like, hey, man, I got my girl right here. I don't want to do this. That's a good excuse to get out of ass whooping. Yo, I'm with my kids. It didn't work. It didn't work. Yo, my kids, <laughs> like, my family, my mama, my grandmama. Yo, like, I'm with everybody. Yo, I'm with like, <laughs> yo, he's he got Down syndrome. He's disabled. Yo, bro, can we do another time? You're out of there. But yeah, sometimes you got to reschedule the ass whooping, right? It like, was that's like lit. they didn't, they didn't, they don't, that's no valid reason behind. Mind you, I didn't know that Freddie had made a joke about Benny getting shot. Oh, yeah, he did. I didn't know about that. Like, remember, I'm Pitbull, okay? <laughs> like, let's not get it twisted. I'm a Pitbull fan. So, I don't know nothing you're about You're telling nothing. me the only thing Freddie says is, oh, my girl is here. He which said, my is- girl, I got my girl here. Let's not do this. And I'm like, I'm tweaking out because the whole time you've been like, listening to this motherfucker th- saying it's anytime, anywhere. Man, basically, I'm like, he's been saying that these niggas are scared of him. Right. Well, whoever they are. <laughs> and I'm, it, it, but you got to, it's, you can laugh and do all that kiki kiki, but you got to, th- you got to think, you got to think about how I felt in that position. Of, I was terrified. Scared. Of course. All I could be. think about was I have a daughter. I got to get back home. I don't know what y'all got going on. I got to get home. I got to make it out alive. That's I all do, I could think I do of. have to ask you one obligatory question. Was Freddie ever under the assumption that you was a down-ass bitch and you were going to go scrap or shoot it out with him in any beef he had? Um, Meaning you were inheriting the problem. Dealing with Freddie is inheriting his problems and you were you knew what you signed up for, so it is what it is. No, I don't think that that's what it was. I think that that's kind of what it became after the fact. Um, because people saw me in the mix. You know, I was pulling dudes off of him. Yeah, I saw you. Doing all kind of shit. I thought she was really down. Because I was like, yo, she kind of getting busy. I was. There's no kind of. You feel me? Like, I'm a soldier. At the end of the day, I did what I had to do. You feel me? Did you fear any of them would have hit you or, you know, assaulted you? No, I didn't. I didn't feel like that. Um, there was definitely elbows being thrown just in the mix. Like nobody, nobody was coming after me. Yo, That's what like people don't understand. Niggas, like trying like, to get this nigga. Like they were trying to pull me off as I was trying to pull. They were trying to make sure I wasn't doing nothing. So, wait, wait. but nobody like hurt so, me. At you know? what point the altercation starts? So he says, "Yo, my girl's here. Let's not do this. this." Hold on. He says, "My girl's here. Let's not do this." Benny says, "Yo, you know you shouldn't be here." At what point? Do the wolves attack? Right after he's like, I got my girl here. You Like, I can't do this right now. And I told Freddie to just take the glasses off because. What do you mean take the glasses off? He had these glasses on. I don't know what vibe he was going for that day. This is not funny, but I want to laugh so bad. Well, he had some shades on like you thought it was cool. <laughs> no, no way. No, he had like readers. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like reading glasses. He had some bifocals on? <laughs> oh, hell no. Stop playing. Stop playing like, nah, hold on. You want to And I was zoom- telling him, just take them off. I remember telling him, just take your glasses off. And then after that, shit went left. What's the first thing that happened? 
Somebody just jumped on him? It was it was madness. The first two people laid out were the security laid out. Whoa, 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 whoa. this flat. So the sec- they what? went after the security first, and that makes the most sense because they're gonna be the only ones trying to protect, bro. They were laid they out. They went after. Oh, were Benny moving like that. But they had our security had you know weapons and shit, but we they couldn't like use them yeah. because they they weren't registered, and they knew that the Buffalo dudes knew that. They knew they weren't going to use no weapon. So they took them out first. And I'm, it's like a whole lot of shit going on. Yo, I always think that it's cap when, yo, know, there's certain rappers who be like, yo, if you with security, we're going to beat the security up first. I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. You're not beating security up. So you're telling me they just beat the fuck out of security. They got, yeah, they were laid out. Jesus. And, um, and now you're just sitting here with, you but got, it's, you got to think it's plates flying, knives flying. We were eating with glass plates. They're throwing plates. They're throwing plates, bricks, all kind of shit. Bricks? They what the fuck? They get a brick? They're out of there. They yeah, they did what they had to do. But um, are, are you like hugging him, trying to like like no, make I'm not, sure I'm not anywhere you're near him. I'm oh, not, you're like so let me he, back up. He was Let immediately get what he deserves. So it's kind of like if we're right here, he was backed up into this wall right here, backed up into it. Really? Yeah, and I, I really truly believe that if that wall wasn't there, he would have been in ICU somewhere. Because he, nobody could hit him from behind. Now nah, he could have ran though. I he couldn't he have ran. There's no way. The there was a there was a, a ledge next to us that was like four or five feet high. He would have had to like hop that. There was too much going on. He couldn't have ran. How long did that last for? Because it looked like they were trying to really damage him. It felt like forever, but it probably lasted like five minutes. What I did realize, and I told people, I said, "Listen, see these chains right here? These are Cuban link chains." Uh-huh. One thing what people don't realize, and I think that's why they didn't take his chain, you could try, I could try with my, it, this is solid gold. Like, you could try to just well, rip it apart. Well, that's the thing, it's like. It, you're, like, if, if a chain just ripped, just, just. It's fake. It's fake. It's yeah. fake. Like, a real chain. It's not going to, yeah. It's, it's going to give you neck burn. Maybe the links are fucked up a little bit, but it's not just snapping. And it's not irreparable. Exactly. But with his situation. So you asked if I was hugging him. No, mm. he was far away from me at one point. Like there was a bunch of men in between us. Is he saying your destiny? Yo, go outside. I got this. No, he not nothing. Now I will give him. After it happened, he said, "Where's destiny?" Like he was looking around for me. But during the altercation, you know, he was far away from me. I couldn't get to him. I was trying to pull people off of him, but there wasn't a whole lot I could do. You know. Um, but to answer your question, no, they were not harming me. They were not intentionally harming it, it, me. It, 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 is Benny knuckling up or he's no. there like the boss? Just Benny didn't like, have to do nothing. Get him. Benny didn't have to do nothing. Damn. And um, so, you know, that's going on. And I at, at one point, like you were talking about the Cuban, I see him over my left shoulder getting drugged by his chain. Just like. What do you like, mean drugged by his chain? Like what I just said. A leash? Like, like he's getting drugged by his chain like I'm doing right now. Like that's yeah. how he was doing like. And I, and I looked over and I was trying to get to him and I couldn't get to him. And it was like, I don't, I don't even like to talk about it because it was so hard for me to go through, you know, like not seeing that type of shit in my life. This person that I love is getting dogged the fuck out, bleeding out of his head, he eyes bleeding? swollen. Yeah. His head was split open. He had a cut like split open right here. He's got a, if you look at him close enough, you'll see the scar to this day, to this day. And, and I just remember feeling so helpless in that moment. Like I can't get to him. And, and I remember the rabbit charm did come off and he was holding on to it. Like for his dear life, like when he opened his hand up, his hand was bleeding and, um, and everybody's like, well, he still did his show. And I'm like, well, yeah, he did. But nobody's talking about the fact that he brought me into a, into that situation. Nobody's looking at me as a human, like, like how hard that was for me. And, the, the part I struggle, not struggle with, but the part that really irritates me is like people see me kicking it with Benny now and they see that I got my chain back from him because Benny gave me my shit back. And um, like Freddie, he didn't spin about shit. When my chain got snatched, he didn't spin about anything. OK, so, so that incident happens. He's bleeding. Um, s- some of your jewelry, you get lost. G- good thing, you know. You're not that hurt, and he's, you know, he doesn't have to go to the hospital, which, you know, thank God, right? Um, He he still is able to do a show. What what are you guys saying when you get back to the hotel or once you leave um, that situation? 
he got stitches and um, we get back to the room and he's like, I'm going to still do my show. And I'm, I'm terrified. I'm like, what if they show up to the show? And you know what I mean? Like, what if he's like, nah, I'm going to still do my show. Like, I'm going to not let nobody mess with my money. And I'm like, okay, but we never even had to come here, you know? And he did, he did a show. Um, but he, did you go to the show? I did. I went to the show. I was with him on stage. I was terrified, but I went with him because I would, I would want him to do that for me, you know? And, um, he wasn't the same after that. Did you have a conversation with him and be like, Hey, you know, I'm a Pitbull fan. I'm, I don't know too much what's going on, but clearly something isn't going right if we're getting attacked like this. Yeah. I, what's uh, going on? Like, I, is your actions online jeopardizing us? So at that point, around? I still didn't know about the tweet. I didn't know why they came after him. Um, You're thinking this is just haters. I'm thinking he's got ops. Yeah. I don't know what, but I don't know why, you know? And every time I would try to bring it up to him, he would roll his eyes and be like, why are you talking about this shit again? Like, you got to let it go. Like, that's just part of it. Like, you just, you just got to realize you're Freddie Gibbs girlfriend now. Like, this is just, and I'm like, well, shit, if this is what comes with it, I don't know if I'm fucking with it for real. Cause I don't have ops. You feel me? Like everybody's fucking with me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like heavy type shit. So yeah. I don't know what the fuck you got going on. I'm also not provoking people online. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? So, uh, I value my life. I don't think he does. And um, did, did did you blame him or did he blame you for maybe you not um, understanding that is part of the game and maybe you blaming him like, hey, why'd you put me in that position? So honestly, I didn't even think about him putting me in that position until I was able to be away from him for a while. I thought, oh, my God, these guys came and attacked us. Horrible people. I never knew the, the logistics of it. Um, he did tell me at a time he was like, I feel like you lost respect for me since that day. And I'm like, yeah, I did. You couldn't protect me. Of course, that's human nature, you know? And I think that when he realized I'd lost a little bit of respect. Wait, wait, why'd you lose respect? Because I, I heard he spun about that, about that shit. He what? He spun. What are you talking about? I heard he, you know what I mean? He, he handled a couple of them niggas who jumped him. You didn't hear shit. You're dead right out here. <laughs> you're making it up. You're out of there. I hear yeah, you. you're, <laughs> you're good at your job. I'll tell you that. I'll give you that. Okay. Wait. So, but, but, but are, are you kind of like, are you watching his demeanor be like? Um, well, I saw what happened and I'm like, okay, you said you were untouchable. You said that you were always going to protect me, but it's always going to be actions over words. Right. And that's what it was becoming. I'm like, I'm seeing something else. You're telling me one thing, you're doing another. It felt like the next day you guys were at like Icebox in Atlanta or something. Though. We were. And guess what he was doing? Replacing what? his watch. Yeah. Not my chain. But, but it felt like it was like a cat moment. Be like, yo, man, they it tried, was. but like, we It was, because he was like, he was like, record me, record. <laughs> I remember, it's so crazy. He you record like, that video? I recorded it. He told me to. He was like, record me getting this new Cartier watch. And I'm like, why do we need to record everything? Like, what What are you doing? Like, why? But of course I did it because, you know, yeah. I, was, I was trying to respect him. But also, why are we doing this? This is crazy. This is like middle school shit. Um, and I thought he was going to replace my chain while we were there. But he, he didn't even think about me. And I was like, damn, like, I was able to hold it down for you in that moment. And you can't even, it's not even about materialistic shit because I've never been that way. But it's like principle, you know? Yeah, um, you, you stood 10 toes down with him. Wow. And I thought that would be respected. But online, everybody's like, you're stupid for staying in the... I'm like, I would have been a bitch for leaving. Nice. You so, know, like you can't win. So after that, um, you mentioned you lost a little bit of respect for him and he could tell. We saw after a while... You know, and by the way, you kept a really good public face of like, hey, this is my guy. Fuck you guys, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But eventually the relationship ended. And, and I'm wondering what happened after that. That probably led up to that. So like I told you, he wasn't the same after that. And um, I recently did the Danza Project podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but 
the guy in the podcast, he, he brought something to my attention that, that I had never thought of before. And he said, maybe because, because Freddie fired those two security that same day that they were, that we were all fucked off. He fired them. Really? He was like, maybe because you were the only other person that shared that experience with him, that negative experience. And he could, he could correlate between you and that experience. He was like, maybe he, he had to get, he had to get rid of you too, to, to pretend like that shit never really happened. I was like, damn, I never really thought of it that way. Cause he was never the same after that. Like people can tell me I'm hating and all what do you that. Mean never the same. Like, he like, wasn't the same. Like, like uh, demeanor wise, like what, what are you noticing? Different? Like his migraines were intensely worse. And, and that was a strain on our relationship too, because a bitch would want to be laid up watching a movie or something. And I would literally be having to catch him from passing out in the kitchen, catch him. Like from like, that was strain draining on me. You feel me? Like, like that's, I'm like, why are your migraines getting worse? I'm like, could it have been from what you went through in Buffalo? He's like, don't give them that much credit. I'm like, well, I'm worried about your health. Like you were hit in the head a lot. Could that be why you're feeling this way? He didn't want to, he didn't want to address it. And, and every time I would bring it up, he would shut me down. Like, you can't, don't talk about that. Like, just stop talking about that. I'm like, well, damn, like it, it affected me so bad. I had to get up. A prescription for Xanax. I was really? fucking paranoid all the time thinking I was going to get attacked anywhere with this dude. Like anytime we would go to Chicago, I would get super like on guard, you know, looking around, trying to make sure I'm, I'm okay. And, um, I'm better now, but that was a very hard time for me. And it, and it affected our relationship too. Cause it's like, I don't want to go nowhere with you no more. You know, <laughs> like I don't, does that turn into maybe arguments and you know the eventual split so we so we're our relationship is still in good standings and he comes down to texas this is like probably seven eight months after probably six or seven months after the buffalo shit he's like with my dad at dinner talking to my dad about how he wants to start a family you want to start a family with me talking to talking to me about wanting to start a family. This is something, and I I told you before. Like, is is that random or did you kind of get that energy from him? What do you mean? Um, did he just kind of like just bring it out of thin air? Like, hey, let's do a fit. Oh no, we had already been talking about okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you know, I would be with his kids a lot, and I always told him like, you know, I'm gonna have another kid before I'm four. I mean, forty. I'm out of there. Thirty. Um. And he was like, I really want to have a baby with you. Like, I love you. All this shit. Just all kind of shit. And I'm like, I'm seeing the dad that he is to his three children while we're together. And I'm like, he's a good dad. You know, people love to say like, oh, you knew who you were hooking up with. And I'm like, the guy that I was hooking up with was present for his children. Mm. You know, this shit that he's doing to me is personal. It's personal. Um, I'm smart enough to see that. But, yeah, I got pregnant um, around Christmas. Oh, I found out, like, two weeks before Christmas of 2020. What was that, 2022? July? 2023. And um, I told him, and he was in Chicago, and he was with his other kids. And he was like, this is what we wanted. Like, you know, we were happy about it. And... um he had a show in Australia, like three shows. And by this time, so I didn't know how far along I was when I first found out I was pregnant. Not, not many people know how far along they are when they first find out. You can estimate, but it's kind of hard to, to put a pin on it. And um, so we go to Australia and it's a two week tour. And I told him, I was like, look, I'm gonna go home after one week so I can go to the doctor, see how far along I am. And um, he's like, all right, like, whatever, like, that's cool. Like, I really wanted to go with you, but, you know, if you don't want to wait, that's cool. In my mind, I'm like, I want to make sure our baby has a heartbeat. You know, I want to make sure everything's good. So I go to my first appointment. They're like, oh, you're about eight weeks along. I'm like, oh, that's further than I thought. Um, and then Freddie comes back a week later, because, like I said, it was a two-week tour. And um, I meet him in L.A., and we're just sitting on the couch talking and he's like, you know, actually, I don't think I can do it. Actually, I think you should get an abortion. 
And I'm like, you could do what? Be a dad. But even though he's already a dad, he's like, I can barely pull it together for the three kids I have now. And I'm like, why would you plan a family with me and then say all this? Like, that's what I don't understand. It's like the baby was his idea. And it's like, if you knew. He brought the idea to your even your father. Yeah. And it's like. His, his, because the internet perception is that, oh, you must have trapped him. No. He didn't want it from the get go. Now you trapped I, him. Now you're you, trying did to you, force did him. Did you to be see all those receipts I posted on Twitter? No, no, well, I, I see it. I see the person. Yeah. And it's like, he. My thing is, people are like, oh, well, he was just manipulating you. And I'm like, well, is that okay? Like, why is that normal to. Why is that accepted by society? Oh, he was just manipulating you and you fell for it. Like, okay, sorry. I thought this person that I was so loyal to. I didn't think that, that person would do that, you know? Mm. Um, and so when he told me that, so he was like, I think you should get an abortion. I was so distraught because like I said, I have a daughter at home. I've had a miscarriage before that shit. It hits home for me. Um, and I was already attached to my baby. Like I was growing a child in my body, a child with somebody that I loved and really cared about. And so when he told me that I was like, damn, like that's hard, you know? Um, he was flying out to Jimmy Fallon next day. And he was like, like I said, I was dry. He been crying. I was out of there. He pulled me into his chest. He goes, this is where I wasn't talking to Freddie no more. He goes, it's okay. I know a place you can go. They'll take really good care of you. What does that mean? Like he knew an abortion clinic that I could go to. And they would take really oh, good care of me. He had a personal abortion clinic. That's crazy. Whoa. So that made me think. Why do you why do you know a place I can go, first of all? And you know him that well that you know they'll take good care of me. It's not his first rodeo. Not his first rodeo. And and you know what? And I want to preface this also by saying that I am pro choice. Um, and in that same right, I was pro choice for myself and I knew that that wasn't what I wanted to do. I brought this baby here on purpose. And um I didn't feel right, you know, just aborting the baby. Um but I did go to the appointment. He flew out to Jimmy Fallon. I went to the clinic. Did he ever go with you to any of these things that had to do with, you know, before the baby was born? No. No, he. So you um, were doing these things alone. Yeah, I went All to my. Emotions, I went to the appointment the alone because remember he was still in Australia. Yep. So he he offered to go with me to the abortion appointment, but I told him I was like I'm not gonna wait a week for you to get back from Jimmy Fallon. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it today or tomorrow type shit. Like, I'm not going to wait as my baby keeps growing. Like, you know, time is of the essence. So, um, remember I had told you I went to that initial appointment. They told me I was eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So I go to L.A. because Texas abortion is illegal. So I had to go to L.A. um, And I go to the appointment. I have my homegirl, Emily, with me. Shout out, Emily. Uh, And I go back there. I had to fill out like a two inch thick packet of like you could hemorrhage you could bleed out you could all kind of shit okay and i go back there they're like how far along are you by this point i should be nine weeks according to that eight week checkup she's like how far along are you i'm like i'm about nine weeks along she does my measurements she looks at my baby she goes honey you're about 12 weeks pregnant and i'm like I see my baby. I see the baby's arms, legs. She was like, we can't get a still image of the baby because the baby's doing backflips. But like your baby is much bigger than nine weeks. So the doctor comes in. He's like, you know, we don't usually do abortions this late term. He was like, we can, but you might have to come back tomorrow so we can get the rest out. That didn't sit right with me. Going in and picking my baby apart. I'm not doing that, bro. That's not, and and people can laugh and joke and make all kind of shit up. This is my real life. And that is what I need people to understand when they're listening to this shit. Because it's like, you can joke about Freddie and getting beat up and all that, but he really bamboozled me into into having a child that he wants nothing to do with. Why do you think he had that change of heart? He has three kids already. I don't know. You know, and you know what's crazy? If you don't want to be involved, that's fine. But I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have no children yet? I don't. Okay. If if one of these women from your past was to pop up and say, hey, I have your child, what's the first thing you would do? 
verify that it's mine. And if it's mine, you know, we, we, we move You would get a paternity test, yeah. right? So he's telling everyone that the baby isn't his. He, he's running with he's this telling narrative. The, 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 telling everyone that your baby isn't his? Yes. Okay. Now, again, you know, this is a place of truth. Other than, um, and, and I do know, at least from your tweets, you had stopped boy, girl things yeah, after I he had, had asked. I had stopped all that. Yeah. Okay. But did you have any intercourse with any other man besides Freddie Gibbs um, leading up to the conception of your child? No. No, I didn't. I know. And that's the thing is women. Why we, would he? Why would we he know where we've been? He, doubt, doubt the paternity of the kid then. He knows that the baby is his. But he's so narcissistic that he's rolling with this, oh, she does porn, so how do I know the baby's mine? You feel me? But it's like, prove me wrong then. If the baby's not sure, just prove me wrong. Shut me up. Shut me up from going on all these podcasts. Is his name on a birth certificate? No, because he wasn't there. He didn't show up for the birth. My father was with me when I had my son. My father is like a father to my son. He's been completely absent. He's never talked to him, seen him, sent nothing, nothing. So when, okay, so you, you go to the abortion appointment that he set up, you realize, man, this baby is way far, further along and I'm not comfortable with right. doing it. I want to keep it. How do you convey the message to him? What's his reaction? So when he went to New York, right, the night before. Jimmy Fallon, yep. He was supposed to leave me the key to the Corvette to, so I could go to my abortion appointment. Mm -hmm. I was like, I really don't want to Uber there. I just, I would like things to go smoothly as possible. He forgets to leave the key. So we get into a little argument. I'm like, yo. Do you think he playing like, nigga, you know, you know. I'm you like, you're like fucking you. with me now. How you forgot, how you brought the key to the Corvette and you not even taking the Corvette to the airport or nothing. You just took it with you. Come on. You always leave it in the drawer in the kitchen. You, you took it on purpose. I'm seeing shit. Like, I'm seeing him like talk to me different. Like, you know. And I'm like, I'm, I'm hip to like, why are you changing up? Like, what's tea? You know. And, um. So I ended up shutting his phone off. <laughs> I told you I was paying his phone bill. That, 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 that is a, that's the luxury when you, you're paying the bill. I was like, you got I me fucked you. up right now. You took the car key. Yeah. And you can get a new phone when you land in New York, bitch. <laughs> but then I was like, damn, I can't tell him I never got the abortion because so I that, that, yeah, Now you guys have no communication. But, but that's not even real because I told his mom. Whom I had a great relationship with when we were together. Okay. I told his manager, Lambo. I told his assistant. I told everybody. And I sent Freddie emails. Hey, didn't go through with it. This baby's coming, whether you're ready or not. I'm going to do it with or without you. Did he try to have subsequent conversations with you? Just to... No, we have not talked in over a year. So over a year and a half. the last conversation you guys had. Yep. When, you, when he went to Jimmy Fallon... You went to the abortion appointment. You didn't go through with it because you obviously seen that the baby was. Yeah. Was, and something I should add is he told me, just get the abortion. We'll try again in two years. And I told him, Freddie, if you make me get this abortion, I'm not going to continue to be with you. Because how do I know you're full of shit? You, you talked up this baby. You manifested a boy. It's literally a boy. Like, how can I continue a relationship with you? If, if this is the type of lies that you be telling. You feel me? Gunna told us he be telling fibs. How does Gunna even know that? <laughs> it's not funny. It's like he really do be lying. Like, why are you lying about shit like this, too? Like, you created a whole life. How hurt were you? I was hurt. And I told him, I said, Freddie, I can't be with you no more. And he, the alligator tears once again. And we hugged each other for like three minutes. That's the last time I seen him. Really? But he did ghost tag me in an Instagram story the other day. How do you ghost tag shit? Because people who ghost tag me. They tag you and they make your at name so tiny that nobody else can see they tagged you. Because they want to pop up in your mentions. So when you go in your mentions and you're clicking that through. Be doing, I'm like, yo, how is this Bitches shit be them? doing that. Yes, I'll be looking. I'm like, yo, how was I on mention? And everybody's like, oh, you always talk about Freddie. He's not even addressing you because he don't want to take accountability. He's not going to talk about it because he's so fucking wrong. You feel me? He's he's so fucking wrong in this whole thing. He's not about to go and talk about if a bitch was pinning a baby on me and I knew it wasn't mine, I would be smearing the fuck out of her. 
how are you gonna pin a baby on me it's not my baby like pr- let's go on maury like let's really do it big is is that his disposition that is just not his that's or? what he says yeah but my thing is like why why would you not prove it then why would you not prove me wrong then you feel me so he didn't show for the for the um he wasn't there for your pregnancy after he's that. never been around at all wasn't there for the birth no didn't sign the birth certificate nothing does does he did he get christmas gift no no nothing 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 you went nothing, through nothing. the pregnancy alone yep what does that do to you I, so I, I feel you're at the point of extreme resentment for someone who you probably felt gave you verbal reassurance that they wanted to have a family with you and they backed out at the last minute when they knew that mentally and physically you couldn't back out it's not really resentment that i felt it was disappointment it was like, damn, I was so loyal to you in your hardest moments. And then the first chance you got to betray me, you took it. Not only me, but your son. If it's fuck me, it's fuck me. But that's your son. And and all these these other three kids that you claim to love and be there for, they're going to grow up too. And they're going to be like, why did you not take care of our little brother? They're going to know. My thing is like, how long do you think you can run from this shit? And I'm not getting the courts involved in his life. You know, people what? people love to be like, oh, you so obsessed with Freddie. Like, stop talking about it. If I was obsessed, I would get the courts in this man's life and, and a whole bunch of shit could unfold. Why not have the courts um, because, force him to take a DNA test? Because it looks like he's going to keep avoiding it. Because if, if, if I'm going off the story that you're telling me, he's someone who has blocked out even like the situation with Benny mm-hmm. to be like, hey, you know, what? I get rid of everyone. It didn't happen because in my mind, I'm still in that it didn't happen. Right. So if he's saying that he's not the father of your child, he's going to keep denying it until he's forced to actually acknowledge it right? right and my thing is i'm not going the court route because one i was never with him for no child support no nothing he does he does he should he should be taking care of his son anyone that doesn't take care of their kid is corny i don't give a fuck how you want to go about it that's just the truth however in this position in this case i don't want to get the courts involved because if the courts get involved and they do say, like, he has to pay me child support. Then he could get granted custody of my son. Mm. And that's never going to happen. He's not coming around my son. That, and that I want to clear that up, too. It's like, this, doing this, talking to you, talking to the Danza Project. It's not to get him to come around. You know, because people love to say, you think this is going to make him come around? You what, think kicking what, it with, What do you, you want know, from him, then? Nothing. I want people to realize who the fuck they're dealing with. But you are going to grow up a young boy that eventually is going to be like, hey, mommy, um, I go to school and everyone talks about their, their daddy and I don't know who's my daddy. Who is my right. daddy? And like I said. you're going to have to c- cross that road and say, hey. And, and that's true. You're right. You're absolutely right. That's, that's definitely going to be a conversation that has to be had. And like I said, my father is a father figure to my son. Um, I don't want my son to know who Freddie is. If that's who he is, like, honestly, shout out Freddie for showing me who you are. Because if that's who you are, I don't want you near my son. You feel me? But but you know what's going to happen, right? No, it's not. No, no. But, I already know what you're going to say, and that's not going to happen. Uh, well, let's see if, if, if you do know what I'm going to say. I, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> He's going to see that beautiful little boy, two years old, three years old, growing so you're gonna see that you're self-sustaining. See that you're not hitting his line every every minute or every day or every week for something that you need. And it's really convenient to be a father who just shows up and be like, that's my son. Right? You know, when you're not asked or you're you don't have any responsibility. You just get to show up and you right, take but some you can't pictures. you can't do that if you can't legally do that. Well, that's what I'm saying. So will you at that point be in the way of him having a relate because you know he is going to come around. Like let, let's be I, he's not going to come around. I don't. I I don't believe life in my is heart. long. If you Listen. think it's eighteen years, that motherfucker ain't going to come around and be like, yo, <laughs> he's going to see you post pictures of you and the the child that came from him. And at some point, he's going to say, you know what? Hey, could I see my son? He for definitely Christmas? watching I my page. Take my son to Disney. He definitely. You know that's going to happen. But the thing is, is like, I just if that is, 
I want to believe that Freddie is a good person. I really want to because I had a lot of good times with him and I don't want it to seem like I'm coming on podcasts and smearing him because at the end of the day, that is my child's father. I would love for him to be a good person and a good dad, but if that's who he is, who he is right now, I don't want him near my son. I got to protect my son. There's no way I would want a man like that around my son because then you're raising my son to think that that's okay. How do you, does he have to repair that image or does he have to repair his relationship with you? What do you mean? So he's clearly done some foul things in how he treated you throughout this whole pregnancy. Right. How he's treated you since your child's been born. Does he have to repair that with you or, or do you only care about him owning up to his responsibility? I only care about him being accountable. That's the thing is like, now you're questioning my integrity. You're, you're going around telling people that this is not your son. Now you got people questioning my integrity. You don't got to be around. If you don't want to be around, don't be around. That's cool. But don't lie and say that it's not your baby. Don't do that. Mm. Can I get that silver phone? I want your honest reaction. Do you feel like anything that you've said about him has probably drove him away then possibly invited, you know, him to, because again, you know, uh, this is not somebody I particularly like, so I don't want to shoot him any bail, but you know, as a guy, I feel sometimes men are, are even though he shouldn't be, because he has three other kids, as you mentioned. Right. Sometimes men are intimidated by having a kid and the weight that that kind of almost purports on you. Maybe that was a moment of, you know, being pussy and, you know, he's going to come around and now when he sees you doing podcasts, <laughs> he sees you posting things and I'm going to be honest with you. So when you were pregnant with, with his child and you did the fan bus, was mm -hmm. the fan bus. Yep. Um, it was a pornographic scene that a lot of people talked about it, including me. Yeah, And obviously he was a source of the ridicule behind it where people are like, hey, your child is in, in her belly and she's having sex. And maybe if there was a point where he was like, you know what, at the end of the day, no matter what I think, it is my child. And if, if there was some, a moment of reconciliation that was about to happen, I think that pushed him further away because now he has to actually inherit that. If he says, oh, no, that's my child, right? Everyone mercilessly clowned him about that. Yeah, and that's cool. But but this is my stance on it, right? Okay, my career was always known. Freddie has a bar. He says, "You knew my baby mamas knew the job was crooked when they took it. Mm. You knew the job was crooked when you took it, too. You knew who you were nutting in. Am I wrong? If you didn't want me to do porn while I was pregnant, you would have made sure I never had to. You would have never left did me. Did you feel you had to? Yeah, I did. I was not in a good financial situation. Did I just got to. through telling you. Did, did, did you really have to? Because I did have to. Really? I did have to. Because I was in a situation where I didn't have a whole lot of money in the bank. I was paying for all my own shit. There was no other job that I could sustain that type of income. What you want me to go do? Work at Walmart? That's a, it's a whole category for me on Pornhub. So you're telling me that if, if, if Freddie had came in and said, hey, listen, I know you're pregnant with my child. I'm going to handle whatever needs to be handled financially that you could give birth to a healthy son. But what I do not want you to do is to shoot porn while my son. And that would have been fine. And you would have not. Pregnant porn, academics, pregnant porn is not something I wanted to do. There were, there were a couple, I did a couple scenes and then. I think I did like three scenes total and at least two of those I had to leave the room before I had a panic attack. Really? Really. That was not something that I enjoyed. You feel me? Like at the end of the day, I really need people to remember that I'm a human just like you and everybody watching this shit. That wasn't something fun for me. I didn't want to be in that position. That was fight or flight. I had a baby on the way and a baby already here. I really want to know what people expected of a porn star. You can't put Candace Owens' expectations on a porn star. It's two different people. I get that. You feel me? I I, I, I know it's taboo, and I, I don't. I thought you were doing that to be vindictive. I didn't think you were doing it to no, make No, I'm meet. not. That's not who I am. I was doing it to make ends meet, and now I'm up, up. 
And now I would never have to do anything like that again. Thank God. But I did what I had to do. You feel me? Like, that's what you got to do in life. And, and that's that's just one of the things that I had to do. It's just a part of my story. People clown me all the time. Oh, well, you did pregnant porn. You think he's ever going to be around for his son? That's not on his son. That's on me. It's not about me. It's about that little boy. You feel me? And what's really fucking weird is he's telling people it's not his baby and the baby look just like him. How old's the baby now? <laughs> He'll be eight months in a couple weeks. Oh, so, so now he's gaining like facial features and stuff yeah, like he, that. Yeah, so the baby actually looks like Freddie's other son. Um, and I don't even know if you've seen his kids before, but, um, my thing is, and he's got people believing it. Like he's you got, he's got something. people believing it. You know, and again, this, this might no, be, he, it's, you're going with your misogyny. Go yeah, ahead, right. baby. This I know be, you got to get it this out. This might be a little bit of a misogynistic thought, Go ahead. but for him to just kind of ignore you, not acknowledge you. Not acknowledge the, the kid that you guys have completely switch on you, which I'm agreeing that all happened. Perhaps you did something. Perhaps you. No, you want me to do something so bad. No. I mean, I, yeah, you could say I disrespected him by doing porn while I was pregnant, but that wasn't a shot at him. That was me making my money the same way I've always made it. Like, what if I sold crack or something and then I got pregnant? People were like, you got to stop selling crack. Ain't nothing like crack money. What you mean? I'm pushing it, bitch. Like, what? Do you, what if somebody told me told you you got to stop streaming? You'd be like, "What do you mean?" No, no, I, no, I get that. And you could go DJ, but it wouldn't hit the same, right? Why doesn't he have this a conversation with you? Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Because he, he don't want to be accountable. He will not. He's got his new girl believing that it's not his baby. I see him pop out with a new girl, which, by the way, here's the thing. I think she owns also has OnlyFans, which I'm like, uh, you, you can't pull this bullshit twice. You clearly like women who okay, so indulge in a certain. He, he's out. He he definitely has a type in the OnlyFans yeah, type shit. But now you you can't come play victim like, oh no, she was fucking other dudes, or oh she was showing you already, her body. No, you're out of there. You, you're picking this. Now. So this baby on the left mm -hmm. is Freddie's son. Yeah. Well, they're both Freddie's son. <laughs> but I just want you to, to tell me if you can see a resemblance. Yeah, they look exactly alike. <laughs> actually, okay. actually, the one on the right looks like the younger version of the one on the left. Right. But he's saying that's not his baby. And all I'm, all I'm telling Freddie is, okay, prove it then. Like, that's it. So why not just get the courts involved and force that moment? Because off? I don't want to put the courts in his life. Because then you might never see or hear from him again. You feel me? But he's going to neglect you. He what? He's going to neglect you and he's going to neglect, neglect his child. Let him. That's At the end of the day, he's got to answer to that as a man. As the Muslim that he claims he is and the gangster that he claims he is, he's got to answer to that. Not me. I'm doing what I got to do for my baby. That's all his shit. Whatever he got going on, that's on him. That's not on me. Wow. Okay, so... We, we, we seen that, but I never knew that's an interesting perspective. You're like, hey, before I even did those scenes, I almost had a panic attack because I think people look at you almost like a robot. Like, well, she's devoid of emotions. She's devoid of human feelings. I'm, I'm really good she at. She just fucks everything. No, and or anyone. what's crazy is that's not true, but I'm very good at, at keeping a poker face because I'm a soldier. You got to remember at the end of the day, I, I'm a soldier and, and they train you to not have emotion. When I first got in my airborne accident and I started going to behavioral health and getting counseling, I was the whole joke of the whole unit. Oh, you're going to behavioral health. That's funny as fuck. No, like we got veterans every day offing themselves because of shit like that. You feel me? I'm a human. I remember one scene. I was pregnant. I felt my whole chest get hot. I felt like I had a, thro uh, a fucking frog in my throat. I was like, I got to get out of here. Like, I, I can't. As a woman, even if you have a supportive husband and you're pregnant, that shit's still hard. So imagine going through that. You don't, you don't got nobody. You feel me? Like, and you're just trying to, you're just trying to make it. That's all I was trying to do. I was just trying to make it. And, um, by make it, I mean, make ends meet. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I did. That's what I did. And I, I think he thought I was going to crash out for real. Yeah. I think he thought I was going to come running. Like I need help, help me something. 
And people, people don't understand is if I was really crazy, I would have made it a lot worse for him. I don't want to do that. Well, I mean, some people might argue that you did. So even before, in what way? Well, it, well, even before we, we've seen you, uh, I personally think you're dating Benny at this point. Well, you think a lot of shit. Well, I, I do want you to clear that up, but give me a second before we get there. Um, before we get there, we're, we're talking about you doing scenes. We're talking about you dropping a diss song. We're talking about, you know, essentially you almost doing things that could be uh, misconstrued that you're undermining his ability to make an earning because you're upset. You're, I want to say jealous, but you're, you're hurt based on how he left you. So let me start by saying anyone would be hurt based on how I was left in that position. Um, but the diss song wasn't unprovoked, okay? And, and you, you've probably never heard of these songs before, but he dissed me on a record called Papa Do's Platter, okay? When I heard that and I was eight months pregnant and I heard him diss me. What did he say? He said something about you couldn't trap me with triplets, some shit, like he was paying all my bills. I'm like, why are you lying on the record? Why would he say triplets? Was there? No, was there was he, just a bar. But I knew who he was talking to. You feel me? So I'm like, okay, if you have all this energy to diss me, but you don't have no energy to check on your baby or nothing, I'm going to diss you and I'm going to do it in your fucking field. I just started rapping. And everybody loved it. it seemed like you enjoyed it. What? I had the time of my life. But I actually like make, making music. It wasn't just because I dissed him. I was like, damn, I found something I'm good at. Is that conflicting? Because I, I really feel like if he called your phone right now, I'd be like, baby, I love you, and I'm sorry. I fucked I up. would hand the phone to you. I, no, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. That's the father of your child. I if he said, I'm sorry, I no, fucked up. I was tweaking. You know we've been no, through a lot. I want to be right. I, I don't. Won't. Let me clear this up, too. I don't want to be with Freddie. There's no bone in my body that wants to be with him. You were attracted to him for, for all those years? I was. I was attracted to him at one point Where's when, I, when, when he was showing me a different side of him. The loss of attraction after Buffalo, after fucking getting me pregnant, leaving me with the baby, after, you know, like pe when people show you who they are, you got to believe them. And I didn't believe him at first. I wanted him to be genuine and, and real like he always said he was. You feel me? But at the end of the day, the fans are going to think what I, like if Pitbull's baby mama came out and was saying some shit like this, I'd be like, bitch, you lying. There's no way Pitbull would ever do that shit. So I see why his fans are like, no, he's he's a god. What do you mean? He you, his fans really think that. That's a fact. And so I'm like, OK, like I'm not telling you to stop streaming his music. Please don't stop listening to his music because he does have three other kids that he does provide for. I need you to keep going to the shows. Keep listening to the songs. You, you know feel me? Interesting. I feel like you even being close to him is what people see when they're close to rappers. You saw that that image of him being some top gangster killer wasn't true. And then that also bled into a lot more of his personality traits that you also realized just wasn't exactly what you thought it was. It right. was a lot of cap. It was a lot of, you know, smoke and mirrors. And also, it was a lot of false promises that weren't going to get kept. Right. And, and you probably now crystallize and be like, wow, I fucking believe this at a point. At a point, yeah. I was down to go, he could have brought me into fucking Iraq. And, he, and if he said, yo, we're going to be good, I'm like, I'm with him. And when you're, when you're being manipulated, that's the whole point of manipulation. You don't know you're being manipulated. Otherwise, it would never work. You feel me? But I'm like, why did you have to bring a baby into it? If you wanted to manipulate me, you could have like planned a wedding and didn't show up or some shit. But you brought a baby into it. Well, a lot of people think that you trapped him because you're not getting no money. What? <laughs> Seriously. A lot of people think I trapped him because what? Because you're not getting no money. You want him to take care of you. And, you know, maybe he's just tired of you. He's wanting to move on. But you're trying to trap him. Um, because you're just not getting money. So, oh, so, oh, you're okay. I see what you're saying now. You, you're saying that people think I trapped him because yeah. I wasn't getting my own bread. Mm. No, no. If I wanted, listen, with all due respect, if I wanted to trap somebody, it would not be Freddie Gibbs. I feel like you probably make more money than Freddie right now. 
I feel like I could, I'm definitely coming close. And this poor money is feeding his son. So if he he can do all that rah-rah on the track and all that, but at the end of the day, he knows what the fuck is going on. Financially, how, how does that even break down? Like, for example, you did a scene, that scene. I mean, you can, the, the, the residual income off of one scene, you can sell a five-year-old tape right now. You feel me? Really? Yeah. Okay. I got shit like three years old that I'd be selling. So you, you get residual money off that? As many times people buy it. Yeah. You got to think, I have like 90,000 fans. Well, only fans? Yeah. Really? I have I'm a free good. page and I have a paid page. Don't. Right, perfect. I'm about to do my math. You're That's out of there. Here. But, but you, you see like what I'm 90, saying? You have 90,000? I have 90,000 on my free page. 90,000 people is like trying to see you naked and shit. Yeah. I mean, I got real people that fuck with me. As much as you are on your misogynistic type shit. No, no, you, sometimes, well, here's the thing. It shocks me. How much dudes like plays? I've learned from my own audience. Like, I'll be like, yo, man, that seems a piece of shit. She's a cloud chaser. They're like, yeah, she's a cloud chaser. Fuck her. Yeah, what's up with that? Why are you hating on no, me? No, no, no. Wait, wait. But you know what they'll do? They'll be like, damn, she just dropped that video. It's busting. They're the same one who, they, they're the same ones who go to subscribe. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, that shit is weird. I used to think you were a bad person, though. Because you're, you're, a misogynist. No, it's not, no, you it's are. not because of that. It's but, not because you, of that. But you know you are, though, right? Uh, no, no, hold on. Fit, yeah, I, you I'm you just imagine you got 50,000 paid subscribers. How much do you charge you per? No, no, no. I don't have 50,000 paid subscribers. I told you I had 90,000 on my free page. Well, but that, that I was equates just going in to, half. I was going to go. I'm doing well over like 70 a month. Mm, okay. Just from OnlyFans, though. Okay. You feel me? All right. All but right. I'm, I'm doing. Good on my own. I don't need no Freddie, no nothing. Okay. I'm, I'm good. And no, I'm not dating Benny. Okay. No, no. Well, we didn't get to Benny's party. You just I, said that. No, no, well, I, I'll, I'll tell you why I thought you were a bad person. Well, not a bad person. Oh, my God. But, but I thought you were a person that, um, you know, were probably using the men in your life, including Freddie. And, you know, I don't like him. But, but probably using him for your own benefit and that's why when you guys ended, I'm like, why are you so surprised? I think he used you for sex. Yeah. I think he used you a lot for sex and sexual experience and that spontaneity. I could imagine him being with you like he's never been with a woman like that. You get what I mean? I like, know. And that's what I tell people. Like, he really made me his Beyonce. No, of course. You can go on the internet and see it. No, of course. And 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 and, and sometimes I look at relationships, and that might be wrong in my part. But I'm like, maybe it's transactional. He used you, and you used him a bit. Because I do believe your cash. Like, we wanted to know, what is this? Who is this girl with the bald head that looks like voluptuous? Like, what's she about? And damn, she kind of looked like she's super sexualized. We started seeing some videos like, what's up with her? That, that, that's giving you um, um, added revenue. For him, it gives him like a particular edge. Like, I see why he was trying to play that image of, hey, I want to do the Kanye. And yeah, because he's going to look like the guy, right? But right. But but you got to remember is I didn't know who he was before we met. He knew all about me. Mm. I didn't know that he was a rapper and I was going to be around. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't seek him out. He sought me out. You feel me? So at the end of the day, like it's no, it's whatever. Like I don't, I wish him the very best, but I just really want him to stay the fuck away from me. Now, if there was a chance he would forgive you after you did. This, I'm not apologizing. That's a point. But if, <laughs> I don't if, know what if, you're if, talking if, about. If, you're there was, there. if there was a point that he could have thought differently though. About, you know, okay, you did a scene. You you actually made a good point. You're like, hey, listen, I didn't do a scene to, like, spite a motherfucker. I did a scene because that's work for me, and I, I had to fucking survive, you know? Yeah, hey, and, and that people really be into pregnant porn. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that, it's a huge fetish, ain't it? I figured that out very quickly. Okay, suppose he's like, right, you know what? I could have forgave that, but then this motherfucker went and linked up with the guy who assaulted me. He, she knew. I don't know what, why it sounds so funny when you talk about it. No, I'm serious. It's not nah, funny. Lisa, I go like, you know, you know what it comes across as? That nigga beat his ass and took you from him. That's not what happened. Yeah, imagine beating a nigga up and taking his baby mom's. Like that's crazy. That's wild. But that's not that what happened. Wild. So I'm gonna tell you what happened. Okay. Um. So I was about six months pregnant. Never heard from. Hadn't heard from Freddie. Hadn't nothing. Right. And a random fan DM'd me and they were like, 
hey, you should ask Benny for your chain back. And at this point, I haven't even thought about that. I'm trying to live my life, make sure my baby gets here on time, healthy, whatever. I'm like, eh, you can ask him. Not thinking that the fan was really going to ask him. That person DM Benny, she was like, hey, Fit Mommy wants her chain back. And he read it and he was like, she can have it back. We got on a call and he he was so apologetic. He was like, yo, that was you were never supposed to be there. Like, you can have your jewelry back. He was so normal. And, and that, for me, was really healing because I was afraid of him for a long time. Because the only thing I'd seen of him was him showing up and wrecking shop. So I was like, damn, like, I was kind of afraid of him. But like I said in the beginning of this podcast, the only way to face your fears is to face them. And he was like, hey, like, I'll give you your joy back anywhere you want to meet. And I said, I'm going to have my son first, and I'll meet up with you after I have my son. And... um. I met up with him. He gave me my chain back and, and everybody was so fucking pissed that I went and got my shit back. And I'm like, why is everybody upset that I went and got my chain back? Oh, you're linking with the ops. Like, okay. No loyalty was owed to Freddie no more after he, no loyalty was owed to him no more after he left me with our son. All loyalty cards are off. Like I don't got to be loyal to you no more. When you, you showed me that you couldn't be loyal to me, so I don't owe you that no more. Benny is not my op. He never has been. You feel me? So linking up with him and getting my shit back was simply that, me getting my shit back. And, and I was able to humanize Benny. Like, hey, he's just a human too, and he's actually a really cool dude. You feel me? Like, I don't know why Freddie was painting him out to be this horrible they used, person. They used to collaborate. Uh uh, actually, if you look back at the genesis of that beef, Freddie, once again, oversteps, says something out of line, gets a, a friendship that could have been pretty decent, to maybe slightly competitive on the hip hop side. He gets it to be, hey, you're, you're clouding me about getting hurt. I could have died. Like, no, nah, we're not really playing like that. You get what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. And, um, and, we, and we're just friends. And people hate that. And I'm like, y'all can hate it all you want. To. We have an understanding. You feel me? Yeah. Um, and people will see me with rappers and they'll be like, oh, they're just passing her around. I'm like, I'm not fucking nobody. They fuck with me because they know who I am as a person. And if like you probably have a different idea of me just sitting here. Yeah, well, definitely just sitting here. But I definitely thought you were dating um, Benny. Yeah, yeah, dating her. No, we're not dating. If you tell me I didn't fuck, I will not believe it. I don't care. No, what we did you not. We did not put it on your life. You have not. I had put it sex. on my life. You've never had sex with Benny the Butcher. No, I have not. I know he fucked you. You was it good. You're really wild for that. You will let him fuck. He's I married. Give you back, I'm fucking. I'll gotta fuck. He's married. He. We're not on He's that. He's married. Benny's married. Yeah, but it's like hip hop marriage. Like Jay Z's still fucking the girls. Come on. Don't, don't do that. No, no, I'm just saying, like, when a when some when a basketball player is married, it's like as married, it's, we just have to keep it unspoken. A rapper is married, it's like, let's just not talk about it, but let's, you know. I think that's the narrative you want it to be so bad. Like you want to be, be monogamous. Huh? Could you ever be monogamous? Mm, I was before. I don't think I could ever be again. I just don't really believe in monogamy for real. What's your idea of like a a, a, um, a relationship you can get down with? Is it polyamory? Is it is it polygamy? Is it? I think like open vibes. Open. Mm. Yeah, I, but I think that I would. I don't see myself in a relationship no time soon. Um, I, I enjoy the people that I enjoy, and that's cool. But I don't think monogamy is for me. I think it's way too many people to experience. Not even on a sexual level, just like. You know, you probably met multiple women in your life that you're like, hey, I really fuck with all of them on a different level. Yeah, you feel me? I feel like monogamy is becoming a uh, tried and true or a tested concept um, recently, especially like I think people are the world is becoming so small with Instagram to center. People are meeting a lot other people and energies yeah. are being exchanged and, and it's I, like hey are, are do we really going to believe in a concept that kind of worked in like maybe the early 1900s where like you were only like confined to this small town knowing like 150 people right. of course that was that one you know it, it, it's i think monogamy definitely works for some people and if it works for you it does it doesn't work for me i don't know i just don't fuck with it for real do you like monogamy 
I'm a guy though. <laughs> well, that's why I'm asking you. Like, I would like to hear. Um, well, I usually only love one person at a time. Mm. Having sex with more than one person at a time is, oh, of course. I wouldn't so fuck. you're one of those guys that can fuck whoever, but your bitch got to stay down. Oh, yeah, of course. Why you're so, you're out of there. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're funny. That's what Freddie should have told you. Hey, hey, check this out. I'm about to sling all the dick I want on well, tour. Well, Freddie, he deals with other things. Oh, you're right, Tyler. This shit type shit. Type shit. You got to give him a honey pack. That's all you need. Well, here's the thing, though. You're like a porn star. Y'all ain't going to lie to you. This is why I don't fuck porn stars. Bro, you <laughs> fuck like professional fuckers. Is like, that why I, you don't fuck porn stars? No, no. I fuck regular girls. Like, they have literally. <laughs> I'm sure. No, no. I'm serious. They have literally, like, they don't have, like, yo, the nigga had me, like, doing the helicopter and he threw me in the air. And, no, no, like, that's this not some even, extra shit. That's not even it, bro. First like, of all, you know what I'm watching porn? This is all I watch professional porn. Like, like, no diddy, but, like, niggas in there got, like, 13-inch penises. That's not even regular. What no, the that's fuck? out of there. I don't fuck with that. You fuck, what's the largest penis you've taken? Um, no diddy. No what? No diddy. That, that's, that's, that means. Oh, that means, like, no homo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a porn star. His name is Jax Slayer. Come on. Like, come on. Is he, is he past 10? Yeah. Like, come on now. Ungodly, but 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 that is, is that not fun though? for me. No, you know what they told me. I right, tell me this is hate. So this is the re- I'm speaking for the regular dudes. Did you see that Drake leak? I did. They say Drake got the implant. There's a new shit. Doctor Miami was even tweeting. They said mm-hmm. yes, you could get penis enlargement. I think you definitely can get penis enlargement. I don't think Drake got that though. You'd fuck Drake. <laughs> no comment. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, if my dick is like, if my dick is wild big, like 12 inches, I'm not even sending videos. You gotta see this shit in person. That, but that's gonna but, be like, yo, the but, seventh one in the world. That's so like overplayed. It's so played out. Like, bitches really, I, I'm not. Could you deal with a six inch? Yeah. You cap it. You're, you're stuck. What? That's more enjoyable than 12 inches. That shit hurts. I heard you were playing with Freddie Gibbs' asshole because he couldn't pleasure you with his penis. That's not true. Come on now. We seen the how'd you have a picture of his asshole to spread open? We call him Spready first, Gibbs because of you. First of all. And why'd you tweet that out? You know what I said as revenge porn? I You I might never, tell the cops on you, you might go to jail. Okay. Let me get something out. You, you got a lot something? to say. Huh? Tell no. Me. I'm you gonna did. get you. I'm gonna get you. I never said that was him in that photo. The internet saw that photo. <sighs> And they said that that was him. You see, she said something where like, so that's it's okay. Mad gave a guy be like, of course it was him, bro. You only saw his asshole. How you know it was him? You How can't. do you know it was him? <laughs> How do you know it was him? Okay, have you ever done anal play with Freddie Gibbs? Because he he liked you for a reason. I can imagine. You I never did anal play with him. No threesomes. That never worked out. He has a problem. I told you. What do you mean he has a problem? Like he has a. Like ED, like type shit. Drake rapped about putting two Cialis in his drink. Two what? Cialis. That's what I swear. Go what is that? Guys. What is that? Cialis is like a Viagra. Yeah, it's like Viagra. So he rapped about putting that in Freddie's drink. No, no, in his drink. Oh, which, which, which I don't know if Drake was almost like low key admitting he has a problem, but I don't even think it's a problem at that point. Don't you think as a guy you could fuck so many girls that like, but like if I go a week without fucking a girl, it could be the ugliest girl on earth. My shit is gonna look like a fucking missile. Because, That's crazy. But if I you think, fuck a lot, it's just not going to be hard all I the think, time. Well, I know some men that just take Viagra just to take it. Like, just to have, like, you know what I mean? Like, Man, really? They not, probably not like, like Not like popping it like Xanax, but just like they have it on hand just in case type shit. Like, they might not need it. They could get hard on their own, but they might just have it in their back pocket just in case. Like, for I'm, a rainy day type shit. I'm going to throw out a wild, a wild thing and you're going to get mad at me. You're going to call this misogynist again. You Maybe, are. No, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe... Freddie couldn't get hard because after a while he lost attraction to you. No, he, we couldn't. He couldn't get hard the first day we hooked up. I always knew that. And, and his baby mama told me, Raven, she told me she was like, he has erectile dysfunction. And I tried to like cover for him and be like, oh, well, he gets hard for me. Huh. You try to cap it up. No way. But he didn't. He couldn't. And it's all good, you know, but that's no, that's what he deals satisfied. with. You, you're dealing with porn stars with 12 inch dicks. Yeah, but it's, it's like more. A it's more. Subway sandwich in a dick. It's more than 
it, it's not just about sex for me. Like I, I, I loved Freddie for who he was, who I thought he was. It, it all weird shit aside. I, it was something I could get past. The erectile dysfunction is something I was pegging him. To get once past. I seen him on your back, I said, You're pegging him. Facts. He jumped. He, once you were giving him piggyback crash, I'm like, You're pegging this motherfucker. No, I wasn't. You were I've, I've done Diddy pegging in my time, but I never. I never. He, he, he never brought out the butt plugs. No. Nope. This is the time to say it. He never did. Really? I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't lie. Why was his ass cheek spread open then? That's kind of odd. I don't Men know. Don't do was that, that him? Okay, all right. L let's l let's say let's say if it was if, if he was into or ever did something like that, wouldn't that almost make it feel like he's been into anal play? If if he was into that kind of stuff, yeah. yeah. Would you do you look down on a man if, if you know he's fucking you and after he just gave you like a solid ten minutes? No, I wouldn't he look then, down. He then gets to the doggy position and spreads his cheeks open. Like, well, you know, up? the man's G spot is in their asshole. I can't. I cannot. Yes, but I'm that's not like a trick question. It's like no, but I'm just telling you. Like a it guy is. doesn't need his G spot to, to to fucking ejaculate. He doesn't need. No, his G but I mean, I would think that that would feel. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a man, so I don't know. But I'm not shaming nobody. You shove a dildo in there allegedly. We don't know what a dildo in there. No, why do you want me to be doing that so bad? Because why the hell would he just open his ass? I don't know why he was that him. No, no, I'm just saying we're hypothetically speaking. Allegedly. Allegedly. It, I don't it, know if, why he would allegedly do that. I have no fucking idea. We talked about if, this before. You know, if allegedly he did that, would you think? Would you think that ah, oh, this nigga not a gangster? A thousand percent. But maybe I don't know. I don't know what what gangsters be doing for well, real. Well, I'm not a, a gangster. I can't speak on it. Well, my people from Gary, Indiana, wouldn't like that. But you know, you got people Gary. there. Yeah. Wait, what you mean? You from there? No, like his people on his block. They're my people. Oh, he got people in Gary, is no, what you're saying. No, no, His people from that block, they're my people now. They don't like him no more. What you mean? They've been inviting me to come through. For you're tour. out of there. I'm serious. You ain't seen niggas making videos? No, I need to see yeah. something now. They, you, they invited you to Gary? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> have, has he ever brought you to Gary? Fuck no, and I'm never going there. I don't have any the desire. People, the people on this block, they like me now. I feel like you got to be from there to fuck with that place. You feel me? Like you don't just go to Gary, Indiana, unless you're from there. It, it, it's it's um I'm surprised he didn't make you sound an NDA because if I'm him and, and again you don't have to say it because I know you don't want to get sued because I, I know he claims he's gangster but he might sue you. You he's never not know. suing shit. Go ahead. What I'm saying is that we know that that picture was him. We do believe you know just off of that if you're doing that you probably were into some anal play. If he's into that and you're a sexually open woman. He doesn't want you to speak on it. If I'm, I would have you sign an NDA. Yo, you can't talk about this shit. You, you can't well, say. Remember how you I can't told say you, you inserted the Samsung remote into my asshole. No way. Remember how no I way. told you that he brought me to his crib the same day I met him? Oh, yeah. What'd you I see there? No, I didn't see anything there. I'm saying I don't think that he, he don't think shit through. I could have been crazy as fuck and yeah. you brought me to your crib. He's not thinking about NDAs. I even told him at one point, I was like, if you want to bring a girl in for a threesome, you got to get an NDA for her to sign. Because because people be running to blogs and all type of shit. Yeah, yeah. And I told him about that. He was never thinking about no NDA and shit. God damn. But that's him. You know, I got a whole lot of other shit going on. That's a fact. That's a fact. I, but I, do, I, do, I feel bad for, um, and I hope, honestly, no matter what I say about him, number one, um, and Freddie, I know you're watching. I, I don't want. I don't want any physical harm. Like I thought it was I funny. I don't think you got beat they up. really invited you to Gary, though. I promise. No, no. The the guys who he grew up there with, they don't like him anymore. I'm serious. They don't. I've heard that. They they don't like him anymore. I'm telling you. Hey, could we come to Gary, Indiana? I'll be coming with Destiny Cream. I'm not coming to no, no, no shit. I, I guarantee they're the most friendliest people to us. They don't like him. I don't know what he did to them. Are you gonna DJ for me or not? Well, you got some music dropping. I, 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 wait, how'd you get into the music shit? Talk about that. What you mean? You know, all of a sudden, I'm seeing, you know, you doing your thing, and then I see a music video pop up. Yeah, you saw it? Yeah. And What'd I was you think like, about it? I thought it was clever. Really? And I was like, I know she ain't write that, because this doesn't feel like amateur first time writing some shit. How much How much you been into music before? How much what? How much have you been into, like, you know, So remember how I or, told you I brought it up to Freddie? Yeah, yeah. So we were at a, we were at a dinner a couple years back with a, with a big producer 
And the producer was like, what do you do for a living? And I was like, I do porn. And he goes, nah. He was like, you're going to be a star. He was like, it's something else. And in that moment, Freddie's like whole face dropped. And he was like, oh, he just want to fuck you. He not really, he don't really think yeah. that you could be a star. Smart Freddie, you smart. Um, be like, hey, don't, don't come over here giving my girls dreams and aspirations. But, what uh, the fuck? <laughs> Telling her she could be better than she what she is? But I didn't know what he was talking about in that moment. But then when I started the music for real, like when I was able to get away from Freddie and really do it on my own, I was like, I'm good at it. I'm low key good at it. And, um, you know, I just dropped my single Gangsters and Ballers. My artist name is Desi Storms. So that's, I'm going to start going by that. You got to call me Desi now. Desi. Yeah. Destiny Cream just hit so hard. I mean, that's a whole nother bitch. But I got some more music coming out. And really? uh, yeah, I think Are you should be DJ for me. With that? Yeah. So it's not just a one time, oh, I'm only rapping to kind of relate to the people in. You know, a space that might be more familiar with him to let them know I don't fuck with this guy. No, nah. so, 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 so it's not going to be all this on set. No, fuck no. You saw that gangsters and ballers didn't have shit to do with him. Um, it's this shit I got going on. It's something that I'm doing on my own. Y'all make sure y'all stream that shit. You got like a little natural bop with like you know even um, recording and even in the music video. I was kind of was like, okay, I'm fucking with it. Even though you're misogynistic, you thought it was good. No, I'm not misogynistic in that way. What the hell? You're. I just think you're a porn star. So like, when I hear Destiny Cream, I'm, I'm a not porn star about. and what else? Veteran and mother and daughter and porn star. Like, kind of like you like, gotta humanize me though. You can't no, keep no. running with the. But, but, right, I'm gonna test them no, chains. No. You're right. You're right. You're right. So I will. I will humanize you. But I'm gonna be honest with you. Like even like when I go on your Twitter, and I think you be going to my Twitter. Is, yeah, I go on your Twitter, but but, but then like why you be going to my Twitter? Cause sometimes I want to see what, what you're saying, and oh, then okay. I'll scroll two tweets and I see you naked. I'm like, oh fuck. You that's what you're yourself. like. You're like, oh fuck. No, no, no well, well, because <laughs> no, I'll be not. on stream. Because I always, I'm like, you're like my number one source to get at Freddie. I'm. Why like, didn't you right. invite me over to stream last night? You, you'd have been down. You'd have been down. I would have been down. Really? Yeah. We got to do a live stream. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I would have been down. You didn't hit me up. I don't know. If, I don't know how you feel about a live stream. Sometimes I, w- I would have done a live stream. I don't know if I, we were we were lit last night. Did you just be me. streaming by yourself? Yeah. Yesterday the Diddy stuff broke. Oh that yeah. Was crazy. That, yeah. They look at me as a news guy, right? So it's like, you know, sometimes it's hard to like break character. Like I've been the news guy for ten years, so when the biggest news happened, they're gonna be like, "We want to hear academics talk about it." Yeah, you get what I yeah, mean. Yeah, well, that wouldn't have been um, a good night to go live stream. Yeah, but still, like, they like you for your experiences. I, and also, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, what I realized with you, I thought you would have held a lot more things or took it personally. And of course, you said like, "I." Hey, this wrong or like you've called me out and shit, but like it's never been like yo, nah, fuck you. And, yeah. and, and like I'm a guy, like I'm kind of that. I'm like I be sending you voice memos. I'm like academics, yeah. please, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> and you be not responding. I be like this dude, he's out of there. Then you be leaving me on red. Not really, but hold on, we got to talk about. Wait, I, I want to understand the relationship with. So I, you got your chain back from Denny. Um, I, I know he's married. I'm not saying like whatever, but it's like. From from what I've gotten from him and you, it feels like he does want to let's just kind of give you a, throw you alley oop to be like, yo, listen, you know, it's a talented woman, y'all, y'all go fuck with her. It doesn't seem like he wants anything from you. Yeah. I thought he was getting some pussy. I ain't gonna lie to you, but if he's not, he's not. Um, how, is that relationship or the, that you know situation with him like a little bit weirded out? Because you know what everyone's saying, yo, bro, how do you link up with the same dude that robbed you when you were with your guy? I was never robbed. What do you say the chain was taken? I mean, okay. But that was never my beef yeah. to begin with. Like I said, when I met with Benny, I was able to humanize him. He does help me musically. Like, I'll send him records, and he'll be like, that's fire. Or he'll be like, I think you should fix this. Or I think you should. That's it. That We're just friends. That's that's all that is. I know people want it to be more than it is, but it's not that. That would be a great storyline. That's how you get that nigga the fuck out of here. Hey, you know how you helped me out? Um, Because there was a time I I was feeling like, I don't know, sometimes, you know, I feel like I'm I'm super, like, transparent. So, like, if somebody says something or does something that affects me, 
people see be like, ah, oh, axe hurt or axe whatever. For a while with, with Freddie, I was like, this motherfucker just don't care. Like he's just devoid of emotions. And you had gave the blueprint, like, no, he'd be stressing, he got migraines, and I was like, he, well, I'm humanizing him. No, that's true. You feel me? Like that's we're true. all human. And I told, I told dude in the Danza project, I was like, we're all walking each other home. You feel me? We can clown each other on the internet. We could do all that. Academics don't work out. Academic that I'd be seeing them clowning you too. But at, at the end of the day, you get on stream and you do your shit. You pop your shit. Yeah. I had to get numb to it a little bit. Hey, what's your type of guy? Are you single uh, right now? Yeah. Well, <sighs> Yo, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna, this is probably, and you see, I'm open and I think transparent enough to admit it might be rooted in a little bit of insecurities. I don't. I wouldn't go after a woman that, um, even like sexually, like and not even dating. Like, that's a whole different can of worms. But it's like a woman who's a um, adult entertainer, or even a woman like you probably give intimidating vibes to a lot of guys. I think I do. Um, even even when they don't know my profession, just off my look. Yeah, even the look. It was like uh, I think I'm intent, but I don't even mean to come off that way. Like I just I I, I wake up every morning. I shave my head because I don't like to have hair. I don't know why I feel like that. I just I like the bald with the tattoos. I feel like it fits me. I'm not trying to intimidate but, nobody. But, but what what type of guy? Like I think for me, I would be like yo. I'm not, I'm like the last guy she would ever w w fuck with. So I wouldn't even That's like. That's an assumption. Eh, that's probably true. You need to have more self-worth. Yeah, I've heard that before. But, 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 uh, but you've dogged yourself out like 12 times already. No, no, you, you look like the woman who likes fucking like, like linebackers or like athletes. I do love me a good like linebacker. Six, seven. You like yeah. you want like a gargoyle looking nigga. You know what I mean? It's like yo, this dude is five nine, a little pudgy. Well, like I'm a, I don't I'm want a, this motherfucker. I'm right? a big bitch. So like I I, I was totally. like, but my I'm five nine and a half. But you know my first my first Fred, my first baby daddy Fred, yeah. he only five five. You're lying. Yeah. You dated someone who's shorter than you. I was married to him. He's from what? Columbia. Yeah. Keep it a bean. I, I know he watched. I know you fuck with him, but. He wasn't fucking you like how the mother niggas fuck you. Oh no, he was laying it down. Five five. <laughs> yeah, it'd be the short dudes that really got it for real. That's people Them don't Tory know Lanes that. Tory type niggas, people man. Don't know that. That's like a, a hidden gem. I love me a short king. I won't be honest with you. I am. There's a little intimidating. Like remember when I remember when, when we hugged and I was like, I was like, oh, uh, I said something about the height. Intimidation factor off the rip. You're intimidated by me. Well, like, I, Stop I'm, no, 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 I'm intimidated. Like, I wouldn't try to bag because I'm like, oh, yeah, like, she's looking at me like a little boy. Yeah, it ain't gonna work. You're, but that's an assumption. Because I just said I love me a short king. See, I wouldn't know that you'd be fucking with five, five Because you don't dudes. know me. Like, me, I like a girl who's like five, two. Like, I, I like look, a little bitty. Yeah, like, well, how look, tall look, are you? Kind of, well, I'm five, nine. Okay. But like, if me and you're the same height or I gotta even look a slight, I'm like, oh, shit. Yo, women, women like a. a, a but very, we're all the same height laying down. That's true, but like, don't you ever think about like you walking around with a guy like you wearing heels like you like you got a little you platform with hey, that look you should have seen me at the altar when i married my first friend really i was like i do way down there but i did it and i meant it at the time but you and dana sure do now you see my boy over there i always i look at him him and his brother ultimate like they only like women who are taller than them and i'm like yo you guys are brave as fuck how tall are y'all He's oh, five okay. six, and he'll go for a girl who's five nine, five He's ten. He's a short king, yeah. He'll go for five, and, and I'll look at him. I'm like, you're tripping. I'm like, I'm five nine, and I like five two. I'm like, if you're around five six, just don't wear but no it's, heels. It's when all cool. preference, like, and everybody can have their own preference. You feel me? Yeah, some people like to climb yeah, that's that what tree. You like climbing trees. Yeah. So why do you think I don't? Do you think I'm like intimidated? Maybe a little bit, right? I, I don't want you to feel intimidated by me. I don't. No, I, I, I think that. it's like uh, no, so. I'm just looking at it on a. It, it wouldn't be like intimidated. Like, do oh, I give the same vibe talk? that I give on the internet? What am I giving right now? You give openness that that um. I'm like, damn, she kind of cool. I might kick it. <laughs> on, online, you just give whore. I'm gonna be honest. With you. you just give whore. Well, that's my job. I'm supposed to give whore. That means okay, I'm doing I, what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess so. Like you give Fruit Loop yeah. on stream, but what? I'm sitting here right now with you, and you like you seem like a cool dude. Like okay. I could kick it for real. Yeah, no, no, definitely. 
um, I understand the point you make about being humanized because you said, you know who I had the same experience with? Brittany Renner. Yo, oh, I love her. Brittany Renner came in here. And I, I had never all, saw that episode. I had all intentions to I'm like, yo, OK, I'm going to do this for the guys. I'm going to eviscerate her. I'm going to do it. for you. She was so nice. She's such a sweet person. Yeah. Like I loved her so much that I couldn't even cap. I was like, yo, this is my friend. And she is. My yeah. Friend. yeah. And, and it was just like, hey, now I understand that when you guys see this perception about her online, yeah, you guys could think that. But like, I can't. Say that you gotta with get y'all to know somebody. because I kind of know, know her. Know and she's like a sweetheart, and she's just not that. Yeah, it, 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 humanizing someone is very important. It is because I think as a society we're so comfortable just in the internet shit too. Like I never get hated on in person, ever. I've never in my life been hated on in person by nobody. Mm. Not even you. You see me in person, you're not coming with that yeah. same energy. Yeah, you're a cool person. So all that internet shit, it can't be backed up in real life. So you gotta you gotta understand that when people are hating on you, it's a reflection of how they feel about themselves every single time. Um you did I remember when you did a scene with Plug Talk. Yep. Break down that scene And I remember you Okay. No, no, no. Hey, no, no. You want me to hear, you want to hear, hear my story? You can tell your story? I know your story. You said you set it all up. And no, you no, had I didn't set it up. No, I didn't set it, I didn't set it all up. But did you but, say that? Um, yes, I'm, you did. No, of course. I probably like capped yeah. a little bit. But the real story was that, you, you, I don't know if you know, and I, I think this is where like, you're a Pitbull fan. You're a little <laughs> bit oblivious to this this world. Adam don't like like that nigga Freddie Gibbs either. I didn't know that either. Well, I think I did. He's just well, okay. passive aggressive. I'm beef so with these let niggas. Me, like, so, oh, so I didn't know that Adam didn't like Freddie, but I did know that Freddie didn't like Adam. And yeah, the only yeah, reason like, I knew that is because I had mentioned plug talk to Freddie while we were dating. Yeah. It was after I stopped doing my boy girl scenes. And I was like, just asking him like, oh, if I ever got the opportunity to go on plug talk, how would you feel about it? His response was, I would be fine with you doing plug talk as long as you didn't fuck Adam. Mm. And I was like, okay. So when that opportunity came up to fuck those other dudes, I was with it. Yeah. But, 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 but you weren't with him at that point though. No, we had already separated. Oh. We had already separated, but I knew from the jump that it wasn't going to be me with Adam and Lena. It was going to be me with two other creators. Yeah. I, um, I, I remember Adam hit me and he was like, yo, we got Freddie gives baby mama here. Don't say anything, but she's gonna be actually the way it sounded was like she's gonna be with two other dudes. I'm like, oh, this is even better. I'm like, I, I don't want to watch. Like, I just want man. But I, I just I need people to understand that none of that was done against my will. I wanted to do it. I did it. Um, was that your first um, in, in the black world? We call that gangbang. That's so not a gangbang. That's a gangbang. No, it's not. It's you a threesome. Two- that's a threesome. Two men penetrating you at the same time. They weren't penetrating me at the same time. Were they? No. Well, no, not 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 not, not v- v- vaginally. Did you like, watch it? Be honest. I, I just seen your face. <laughs> did you watch it? Be honest. No, nah, nah, you nah, watched nah. it. Yeah, you did. No, you took no, no, way wait, too wait, long wait, to wait, respond. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Was it's it okay. you were sucking one guy off and the other guy was fucking you? Okay, but that's a threesome. That's not a threesome. Yeah, what? it is. Yes, Please, it that's is. threesome. That's three people. That's a trade. No, it's not. That's misogynistic as fuck. What? That's a threesome. Okay, so if it's a girl and two guys, if it's a girl, if it's a guy and two girls, then it's a threesome. It's a threesome, yeah. No, no, all right, hold on. No, no. I I hate it here because you're not being real. No, 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 no. This is not misogynistic because I have a very logically sound argument. And you could. So in a threesome, just like if there's going to be a polyamory relationship, everybody has to have some contact with it like in, in polyamory is like it's not two people in a relationship and another one all three people need to have a relationship with each other in a threesome all three people need to be sexual with each other so if it's me you and another girl i'm sexual with you you're sexual i with see her, where you're going with she's it sexual and i'm about to me. shut you down because i want you to hear me very closely you said all three people got to be sexually involved. Two dudes ain't. Did the two dudes kiss or like like slap? Tell me why. The, tell me why. After I did the scene, nobody briefed me on this. I found out they made content together. Those two dudes. Wait, what do you mean? I just said it. 
Like they you, make content together. Okay, yeah, that's like the only fans talk. I was, Are you I was they literally fuck each other. No, they don't. I'm gonna let you subscribe and do all that. I was literally, I remember like doing the scene and looking up, and bros were looking at each other, and I was like, "No, nah, stop, mm, something ain't right." I probably look at you could watch it and you could see it. I pull this bitch up right. I didn't nah, even, I, do I didn't even want them to 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 put that shit out. Cause I was like, I don't even know if these dudes like these dudes aren't looking at me. They're looking at each other. That was a threesome. And if you want to say that was a gangbang, that was the weakest gangbang. I'm gonna need a line of at least six or seven people. Type shit. Okay, you just threw a monkey wrench into it. Maybe they fucking nah. Said because shit. that's oh, a train. Man. That would be a train, right? Yeah, a little train. Okay. You've been the train before though. No, I haven't. You've never done a train. I've never done a train. Come on. When you were younger, you know what when I mean. I was younger. That's when most girls get the trains out of their system. Like, you know what I mean? I've never, no, I've never and done a train. In high school, like, you know what I mean? You, you, you like I've three never done a on train. a football team, it's, you let them all fuck you. It's like hard to One find. One person open crib. It's hard to find a group of dudes that's into that. You know? Like, a lot of dudes don't want to be sexually involved with other dudes. Not even involved, but just no. in the same room. You know what I'm saying? They're not in the same room. They're just waiting on the other, in, in, in the other room, and they're like, yo, it's like a doctor's appointment. It's like, yo. No, that's, that's not a real just, train. What's a real train to you? Like single file, second tile, waste your turn. Like in the same room? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm here? Oh, hell no. Yeah. See, they don't want to do that. So I've never done it. And I don't even have that desire really no more. That, that shit came and you've done that. Huh? What's the craziest thing you've done? Like, you, like you, you, you're you like seasoned in this shit. The craziest thing I've done? I, I don't really do crazy porn, though. Like, if you watch my shit, I don't do no anal shit. I don't do no double really? penetration. Uh-uh. Fuck no. I thought that's what make the money. It do, but like my eyes water when I take a shit. I'm not trying to have nothing in my butt. That shit hurts. Mm. That shit like, hurts me. I don't. Do did, did, did you enjoy girl and girl scene? Um, if it's like a bad bitch. Would you consider yourself bisexual then? To an extent, I don't think I could ever be in a relationship with a girl, but I could definitely, you know. So you would be cool with being with a man and allowing him to have sex with any girl he wants. As long as he protected my sexual health. Okay. Would you be down with not fucking another guy? Um, if I was if I was with the right dude, yeah. Okay. So so remember what you were saying about so my idea of it's open on my end, close on your end, it works. It could. It could. But I I'm just in a space right now, like I'm twenty seven. I, I have a lot of options. You feel me? Are you so. looking for Love experiences or you're just searching? I'm not looking for love. I, I feel like happily ever after for me is me and my kids for real. And that could change. You feel me at any given point. But right now I'm not seeking out nothing. I'm working on my music. Um, I'm actually planning to retire from adult entertainment here soon. Uh, so, you know, subscribe while you can type shit. Because... <laughs> You know, I'm on to bigger and better things. Does music make you more fulfilled at this point than? A thousand percent. Really? And, and like I said, like porn became something I wasn't challenged in anymore. And music is something that I'm like, I could do a record. I could hear it over. And be like, no, I got to do it again. I could, I could do it better. Like I'm challenged, you know? Hey, have you? So um, I don't know why I, I know this. Actually, I know a girl that's. Oh, never mind. Was you you ever heard of this motherfucker named Baby Alien? Yeah, I seen him. And they gave you like fifty bands. Did you fuck him? I'm not working with Baby Alien to that extent. I would love to make a reel with him, no, uh, no, 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 but no, not no, that type of content. They're talking no. about fucking. I was I was actually asked by the fan bus really? to work with Baby Alien, and I declined politely. I don't know what he got going on. He got motion. He got hella motion. Like he be getting booked to go host at clubs and shit. Like people really fuck with bro. Wait, like so it's just not my type of party. Why wouldn't you fuck him? It's just not my type of party. I feel like you're like a sapiosexual. You don't care about looks like that. I don't care about what? Looks. You're a sapiosexual. You care about energy. I would, I would, well, you can't be like totally fucked off looking, you know? Baby alien already got a stick on him. He got a missile. I'm not talking about baby alien. I'm saying you just can't, like you said, I don't care about looks. I care about it to an extent. Yeah. You know, like you can't be totally out of there. But like Freddie, not the cutest guy, but I was with him, you know. I thought I was just the type. I was like, you like light skin dudes, ball head, like a milk dud. Freddie not light skin. 
No, no, that's what I'm saying. You like dark skinned dudes with. Oh, bald heads. yeah. Like, I, like, I do like bald heads. I won't cap. My shit is like. I like that shit to be like a bowling ball type shit. Didn't you have a tattoo of Freddy? You're looking at it. Where? <laughs> you looked right at it when you said that. What does it say? Uh, that's Freddy. Oh, damn. Are you going to cover it or no? Yeah, I'm probably going to black out this whole side of my hand because it's just, it's just so hard to like. You can't laser that. It's so thick and deep. Like, yeah. you know. What about. um. Benny, where's his tattoo at? Come on. I don't got no Benny Griselda tattoo. Griselda tattoo. Oh, Ooh, that come on. Hard. <laughs> that will go hard. That will go hard. So you got your body done and everything, right? No. You're not natural. Fuck out of here. I have fake boobs. Yeah, but ass, that ass is fake too. No, it's not. Stop. It's not. You're not working. I was just niggas. telling my homeboy in the strip club last night. I want to get a BBL because like all those bitches were like BBL'd up, and I was like, damn, I feel like I need to get a BBL. But I've never got no work done on my body. I just assumed you had mad work done, like facially. Uh-uh. Um, um, I've had. Titties. I'm gonna tell you what I've had. I've had my lips done. I've had my titties done, and I get bow socks, and that's it. Because I don't want my forehead to wrinkle up. So what about um? I hear chicks getting like. Like a little surgery on the, like the pussy rejuvenation shit. I've never done that. Really? I thought you were like all surgeried up. Why would you think that? I don't know. Like once you start, like why stop? Well, because I don't feel like I need to do all that. Nah, well, I don't know how My you My shit before. look right. I don't yeah, know what type of bitches you be no, that's dealing with. I'm giving you a compliment because I'm like, it looks like it's, it's already good. Oh, you know what I mean, So I, I, didn't, I didn't know how you look before. Million dollar pussy. Which, which, rap, which rapper you about to fuck with next? You, listen, F- Freddie can't be the top fuck of Fuck with? What you mean, like, on um, what type of tip? Like, Drake hits you up right now. I actually just went to a Drake show the other day. Word? Yeah. Uh, really, really amazing you production. Or are you, are you good? No, I'm not saying like that. I'm saying I went to his show. Drake like girls like you. That's cool. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you about my experience at his show. You wouldn't fuck with him? Academics. Come on now. It's Drake. Drake is Drake, and that's that's cool. I'm telling who's you, your, who's your rapper crush? My rapper crush? Yeah. I don't think I have one. I don't really what? have crushes. I'm so numb, bro. Like, I just be out Would here. You fuck Pitbull? Honestly, no. Like, what? I'm not. I don't like him like that. Oh, you you're not that big of a fan. I'm just a fan. I don't. I don't want to fuck. It. I feel like me and him look just alike, low key. Perfect. But I'm saying, I can make Siamese twins. I mean, not really. Bad. I don't want to fuck him. I, I, I just love his. I want to like talk to him and tell him how he changed my life. Type shit. Like I love his music like that. That's the best type of fucks when. But I don't. I don't like, have no crush though. Like I'm just. I just be out here. But I was saying about the Drake show. The production was incredible. Like, you know. You went to it recently. I went like a week or so ago. Mm. Week and a half, two weeks ago. Who else got a bald head that's black but way more successful? Would you fuck Young Jeezy? He just got a relationship. You know, I was actually with Freddie at the airport when we ran into Young Jeezy. And I didn't even, I'm not even going to go there. How is Jeezy looking good? He looked good. Yeah, he was with uh, his wife at the time and their baby. She's out of there. Trust me, out of there. She's what? She's out of there. He got her out of there. Oh, well. He back single. When I saw him, he was with her and his baby. We saw them at the airport. Wait, was Freddie acting like he was a tough guy then? No, Freddie went and dabbed him up. Oh. Yeah. Would you fuck Jeezy? I'm not... You know, it's so weird when you ask me questions like that. No, and we're not talking about support. I'm, I'm talking about who you're attracted to. Like, I'm trying to figure out. I think out your Jeezy type. is a handsome dude, but yeah. I'm, I'm not about to come on here and say about who I'm. I don't even be fucking like that for real. I, I've cap. I've sold you. What's the last time you've had sex? Probably like two weeks this ago. Is cap, bro. Probably like two weeks ago. I swear. What? I don't have to. When's the last time you had sex? Um, well, people watch this. I can't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're like last night on stream. No, no, no. My chick is watching. <laughs> I haven't... Your chick? Huh? What the one one? Stop. Shout her out remember. real quick. What? Shout her out. We beefing right now. That don't matter. No, no, we beefing. Well, shout out to your chick. Yeah, she we beefing. She got no like. She got to learn how to act. Oh, you're out of there then. What you mean? Oh, don't tell me you're not no feminist, are you? Um, I wouldn't classify myself as a feminist. This is but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realist. I've told, I've used you as an example. I've told him like you'll never go out like this. You want my she, autograph or something? I'm like yo, she's embarrassing. Freddie. Nah, you a fan? No, no. You, but but seriously, like I'm gonna be honest. If I'm Freddie, 
I would have pulled you to the side a long time ago in a headlock. And I said, bitch, how much money you need to, need to disappear? You don't got it like that. Man, well, we have had to find it because you didn't know. But you a be- fan of me, though. You could just say it on the record. No, we fans. Yeah. Wait, we fans. We fans of each other. <laughs> okay. I would have put, no, no, no way. Yo, no way. I would have, I ain't gonna lie to you. I would have burned the whole fan bus down before that shit happened. Take care of your kids, man. Yeah, do plan to take care of my kids. I ain't gonna lie. I do think that maybe he's just had enough that that he could like slack. Once I have a kid, the woman who has it, I'm gonna treat it like gold. I can't wait. I believe you will. Like, like you know, I'm one of those guys who be like, no, I don't trick. But like, wait till you see the mother of my child. <laughs> yeah, nigga. Yeah. I bet yeah. you. I bet. I hope you pop out with like the craziest bitch that nobody would ever expect. Shit. Well, shit. Nah, I'm gonna spoil the shit out of her. But that's that's and, what and, you and, should do, though. I want people to understand that when a woman is carrying your child, it shouldn't it's be the most precious thing on earth, ain't it? It shouldn't be shocking to support her and love her and treat her as she should be treated. That that woman is is housing your baby. Yeah, so everything that woman is feeling, your baby is feeling. And if you, I asked my dad this question. I said, Dad, how could you leave your child? Like in, in an alter, uh, alternate universe, how could you leave your child? He said, honey, the only way that you could leave your child is if you hate yourself. He said, that's the only way. Wow, that's strong. And my, my father knew Freddie very well. Like we never saw any of this coming. I but think, but, but everybody can't go. He's going to come back around. I think he's hurt. He's not coming back around. You keep saying that like he's allowed to be around me. He can't be around me. He don't have that access no more. No, no, no. He, he'll apologize. That don't matter. Time will heal. Okay, that's fine. Let's talk in five years. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, um, I, I think right now he probably feels validated by saying, yo, this stupid ass bitch is like doing crazy shit thinking I'm going to be there. I'm going to show her what it feels like being alone and doing it alone. And you're probably being like, all right, motherfucker, you ain't been here so far. So stay the fuck away from me. Yeah. Stay away. And, and, and he you know, got, he, you know, he's in his new relationship. He, he that's distracting him right now. Who's better? You or his new girl. Why is that even a, a, a that's question? Always matters. You can't pop out with a new girl. And I don't the old think girl look better. I don't think that you can compare. She got bald head too. She got bald head too. Like I'll, I'll compare. No, she don't. She actually looks exactly like I looked when me and Freddie first started dating. She oh, has so that like not black pixie yet. cut. You got to look exotic. I think she's girl. a pretty girl. She don't. She don't fuck with me just off the strength of. Y'all want to get to a point? Y'all don't have a threesome watch. No. <laughs> you want to sexualize everything? Yeah. I think she's a pretty girl, <laughs> but I don't think she's me. You feel me? And she oh, was she pretty. She just not bad. She was she was on Twitter talking there about you go. She, she pretty. She just not she was, bad. <laughs> no, nah, she was she was on Twitter talking about talking shit about you. Yeah, she you was. Like, her you beat her up. She no, no, her. she was like on the set. I'm from DC. Oh, we're she's gonna, from DC. She's like we're gonna. She's like I'm gonna knock your teeth out. All kind of I shit. I seen her. She look ghetto. She look ghetto. I'm just saying, come with it in person. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to. I don't fight bitches. Don't fight. Call cops on her. If no, like that, call the cops no, on. no, no. But I'm just saying, where Did is Freddie ever call the cops this on, my thing? On Benny? No, really? I'm like, where is all the hate coming from? I don't want your man. You're yeah. mad at me because he don't take care of his baby. Mm. And she's like, we don't care about that baby. I'm like, okay, you're telling me this is your, you're telling the whole world this is your soulmate, but you're saying you don't care about his baby. We don't care about it. Hey. And, and you're taking care. She's what? She's babysitting his other kids for real. So if you if you fucking with all them other kids. And you saying you don't fuck with this baby? You're weird. She waiting her turn to get pregnant though. You feel me? And I hope I hope that happens. Freddie got tight. And I hope that works out for them. Ooh, I forgot how she looks. Is, is she black, white? Um, I think she's mixed. Ooh. With like black and white, like me, like black and white. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find her OnlyFans on Reddit too. She That's she's on OnlyFans. I know she's yeah. On. Uh, trust me, I did. Uh, I, she's on my poster board. You know what I mean? How to destroy Freddie Gibbs Life One Hundred and One? Oh, you were you on have it, one? but then yeah, yeah, but but you've now moved over from the op side to the ally side. You're my friend now. Yeah. And, um. Now his new girl, he's got to figure out um what's the deal with her. Okay. All right. L- 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 let's uh, have I talked about everything? We should wrap this up with just your music and what you got going on. Yeah. So I uh I have some more shit coming out. Um. New songs. New songs. When. 
I don't you have a job with a video. I, li- I, li- I like the little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you fuck with yo, gangsters and ballers? He was in a bunny costume. No. Who was it? I actually got a homeless guy to do that. You're lying. Yeah. What? He he's a he's a homeless street performer in my okay, city. Okay, okay. He's been street performer for like 15 years, and he was thrilled to do that. So That's fire though. Yeah, I threw him some bread, had him keep the bunny suit. I'm pretty sure it kept him warm through the winter. <laughs> That's dope. But uh, I got more shit coming out. Um, no, like, hard dates and shit. I got some features coming out. Um, really? Yeah, I, I think the music shit is really going to go for me for real. So. You should stick to it. It's, it's you remember my artist name? What's my artist name? Um, Come on. Ooh. <sighs> is it the liquor? Um, it's it gotta Desi, be. It was Desi, Desi something. Desi Storms. Desi Storms. I was about to say Fox, but that's your real name. Yeah. So yeah, the music is coming. Okay, I like that. Yeah, and um, you're gonna DJ for me when I go on tour. All right, come on, let's do it. <laughs> we do it. In, uh, listen, I'm popping off of the Gary Indiana show for, for sure. Why do you want to go there so bad? I actually don't want to go there. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but his friends, his or his ex friends, people really message you talking about. I believe you, but that's wild. I'm gonna share the exact guys. Like, I think you think I'm trolling. Well, that's what you do for a living. No, no, no. This is real. Um, these are the guys right here: Gary, Indiana, Freddie Gibbs. It's crazy. That's all you gotta type in. Like, there's no positive press that comes from there with him. Um, actually, no. Maybe I gotta type something else. I'm typing expose. So you don't, um, like, if you were to run into him, yeah, you would have no words for him for real? Oh, it's my guy right here. This guy right here? This big buff guy right here? Who is that? Valley. I don't know. And the girl, she hit me up, too. Yeah, they're all on his block. Here it is. They exposed him as a fraud. What? I didn't know he was in the National Guard, but I know now. Yeah. By the way, I know so There's his, no way that's real. No, I'm serious. I know his old house. They wanted me to do the podcast in front of his old house. I just didn't want to do it too much because I thought he had like Can a Can you hint. send me that? Because that's crazy. Yeah, he had a, I thought he had a hint of gangsterism, but everybody told me like, no, nah, he's a bitch. Like, you're good. I mean, so. if nobody's fucking with you from your own hood, yeah. that's crazy as fuck. Yeah. Like... And that's why I say, like, people people think I'm coming on here to, like, talk shit. But I'm like, no, like, you can like his music and think he's a good artist. But two things can be true at once. He can be a good artist and a really shitty person. And that's cool. Like, you could still listen to the music. But, like, if I would have seen a girl come out like I'm coming out before I got with him, I would have never got with him. Hey. Um, you feel me? I, I, I'm, I feel like we had preliminary talks. Why am I not the godfather? <laughs> Serious. Well, you went on. You were on some bullshit talking about you told people you I let you name my son. Well, so can you clear that up, please? Well, we didn't do that, but like, um, you know, we were discussing. You know, you you asked me and I shut it down. Not already shut it down. Replay. I said academics. I said shut the fuck up. You. Uh, I don't think you said that. No, I didn't say shut the fuck up. But you were like, um, okay. Did you name my son? Yes or no? Nah. Okay. Thank you. What's the son name? I didn't name the son. I didn't name the son. His name is Chrome. Ooh, that's fire. Yeah. That's actually a dope name. Chrome. Chrome. You're going to have to change the last name to Tipton, though. Chrome Tipton. No, his name's Chrome Fox. He's actually got my first baby daddy's last name. That's where the fox comes from. No, you got to go. You got to be Tipton. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, that's that's the thing. No, my... Freddie Before Tipton? I come back in my son's life, even though I was a deadbeat for the first four years, you got to rename the kid after me. You know, Freddie changed his name to Gibbs. Really? Like he changed his legally. It's not Tipton, yeah. Yeah, Tipton did sound wow. It sounded like a tip line. I was like, Tipton you know, sound fa- like there's nothing did, did, behind did you ever it. Meet, like, meet his father as a cop? No, I uh, so I knew his dad was a cop at one point, but when when I was dating him, his dad is like a singer in a, in the Shy Lights, like a no. Like a, now he is, but but his his father was a police officer. Yeah, he was well decorated. Um, you know, I think I'm, I made a donation. On his behalf to like the little PBA associate, like you could do it for like retired police officers, you know, to make sure the family is good. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. His brother's an OBGYN. 
Yeah, I told people his 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 yeah his, his brother's a, a doctor. His, his family has very normal jobs. Like his sister works for the FDA. No, and he has a he has a family member that's uh down with the DA. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. Oh man, see, you gotta do your research. But he's it's a gangster, okay though, like, so I don't hey, know. I'm not a gangster. Like, listen, I'm not a gangster. Like, I would listen if that had happened to me. I'm telling. What happened? The Benny the Butcher and his, and his 30 goons come take my chance. I'm telling. Oh, yeah, but I didn't. Yeah. But, he, you know, if, if I ran to Freddie, um, I think me and him would have a nice conversation. We'd dap it up afterwards. And then we'd probably both leave and diss each other online afterwards. That's, that's crazy. What, like, that's just kind of, that's the type of guy I think he, yo, Freddie is like me. Yo, plays. me and Freddie's life is just alike, except one just became a streamer. One became a gangster rapper. Mm. We would meet up. And probably be like, man, you know, we sh man, I should slap you right now. I should do this. I should do that. And they'd be like, man, you know what, man? I can see you just a clown, man. I, you know what? I'm going to catch you. Yeah, it's then all internet shit. Then we both go home shit. and then it's we get internet. back online and be like, fuck you. If I ever see you again, you're dead. I gave you a pass one time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. It's okay. <laughs> it's all internet shit. I don't take it that serious. I don't take yeah. it that serious. Damn, you're enjoying being single? I'm trying to get in a relationship now. You just said that you were dating no, Oh, yeah, no, I am. Okay. What, stick to the script. Are you dating? No, I'm somebody? trying to have a kid now. Oh, yeah. Well, you should do that. But I gotta have it with the right person because if I have one with somebody like you who's like linking up my ops, imagine my, imagine my baby mama linking up with like me. I Mill. wasn't linking with the ops before. And it's true. Before. Okay. You feel me? And, and I don't even look at it as like linking with the ops. Like Benny, Why my friend. Why like, Freddie like he's so broke though? Like for, for, for Freddie. I remember seeing the little Aston Martin he had. I don't want to say he's broke. Um, he definitely up like 10 mil. No. Plus. No. Maybe he's just giving to baby mama. He never spent it on you. Mm. He's, I, I seen the way he lived. Like I, I lived in his house. The couches are old. I, I peep the quality. You what feel you me? The couches are old. They're old. Like grandma couches? No, like just old. Just Need a refresh type yeah, shit. Yeah, just the the rug, like the dog had peed on it over and over. And I was like, we need to get a new rug. He just didn't really want to prioritize. Like, you know when a man has real money. Damn. You feel me? And, and, I, and I'm not shitting on him. Like, I want him to get more money. You know? But like, what now I'm worried about me. I'm not worried about him no more. Like, I, I want to, honestly, academics, I don't want to talk about this shit ever again. Your friend. Freddie, on me, the internet and all that. Like, Freddie, me and you were going to do a collab tape, okay? Like it'll be two enemies. What going kind of you. tape? Oh wait, no pause. No, no diddy. Oh, okay. No diddy. No way. I, just, I, I needed you to clear that up because I knew they were gonna come for you. If Why you, did. you and him never did like some little shit on OnlyFans? He acted like he was down for it at one point, and then he was like, "No, nah, I don't want to do no content." I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of guys do that with OnlyFans girls, where they act like, "Hey, yeah. yo, I'm okay with the life." Whatever. Matter of fact, we should. I'm yeah. down to be like, a, I'll just do a video with you. And sometimes it's just to manipulate and reel a woman in and knowing that they really have no intention of doing right. that. Right. I mean, we got tapes, but we never like sold them. Oh. Uh, you know? Put them on OnlyFans. Yeah, so you, you gangster. I'll clown him. <laughs> you know what's crazy is I could put him on OnlyFans and tag somebody else because he's not in it. But I would never do him like that. You, you should have me? love for him. Um, in the way that I don't want nothing bad to happen to him, but that's about it. Um, be, be very honest. Um, do you, is he the person in your past that you've loved the most, even if at this point you might feel indifferent? No. Really? It was your, your, um, first nope. husband, right? Who? It was this dude that I dated when I was a senior in high school. Really? Mm -hmm. What the hell did he Shout do? out Gavin. Gavin. Yeah, his name's Gavin. So white boy right there. No, he's black. Gavin? Come on. He's like blacker Gavin than Newsom? you. No Gavin, way. Yeah. He's like six. You ever three. dated a white guy? Yeah. I've dated white men before. I seem like you'd be like, you know, you kind of probably prejudiced, like yo. Prejudice is wild. I'm black and white. I thought you was white. No. You're like Italian or something. You literally always say that. You're like, why is she? Why is she looking like this? She's a white girl. Did you I'm, say nigga on that track? I was like. All right, I'm gonna give you a pass. I hate Freddie. My dad is black. <laughs> Word? Yes. You gotta post your dad up on, on Father's Day. Like, we gotta see the dad. Like, I yo. can show you my dad like, right now. Okay, let me see your dad. Like, 
Are we talking about biological dad or like my biological dad, dad is Yo, black? If your adopted dad is black, but your biological dad is white, could you say nigga? No. Yeah. This is my dad. You're mixed. This is my dad and his dad and my son all in one picture. Literally the other day, I'm about to show you. Yes, I'm mixed. Oh shit! This look like Drake's father. What? It look like Drake's father. Like oh, that's, Drake's that's my looks. dad and his Drake's dad. Drake's father's black. Yeah. With my son. Oh yeah. shit. You came out of this nigga's ball sack? That's crazy. Wow, you're very light skinned. Damn. Did you hear your lips done? Yeah. What are the injection thingies? Yeah, yeah. How long do they last for? I don't know. I haven't got filler in like three years. So. Really? But yes, I am I nah, am black. Like no, no, you have naturally voluptuous lips. No, I, I I do, but I just wanted them fuller. Like kind of like yours. Oh, pause. Like, no dip. You look like you have filler. Whoa, chill. Stop. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, you do. You yo, got them like. Yo, <laughs> you got yo, them like yo, look DSLs. how you right there. Look at this. Huh? Nah, it's not. Oh, pause with DSLs. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't even eat pussy. That's crazy. Could you date a guy who don't eat pussy? No, that's, on, that's like, like DJ Khaled and shit. I'm Jamaican. We don't need pork. So you eat pork, but you don't eat pussy? No, hell no. We don't eat both. Oh, I was about to say, you're we out of there then. You can't eat nothing that bleed once a month, but don't die. What? Mm -mm. You got to try it once. You have to. You, you're Think out so? of there. Like, you literally, like, you're not living. You probably tried everything, though. Have you eaten a nigga's ass, be honest? Yeah, a thousand percent. You liked it? I, I enjoy it, yeah. I don't like my ass ate, though. Good, good, good. I don't like my ass ate. But you need to eat some pussy. I ain't gonna lie, our girl was like you know, looking down there, went past the gooch a little bit. I, I, I just I just zoned out. Well, you gotta zone in. Not that free. You know what now. Glorilla said about niggas that don't eat pussy? What'd she say? She said then you gay. What? If you don't eat pussy, you gay? Like, wait, how does that compute? That's what she said. You're fucked up undercover stand gay. By it. You what? Ever fucked an undercover gay dude? What do you mean undercover? Like you realize they like this nigga's gay. Who the fuck? <laughs> Or maybe those two guys you fucked at the like. Oh, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah, I didn't know they they were doing. Yo, were gay you like stuff. just in there like looking up like is you bitch niggas looking in each other's eyes? You gotta watch <laughs> the tape. Wow. You gotta watch it back because that was crazy for me because nobody told me. Would you I'm fuck fine. Adam? What w would you go back to plug talk and fuck Adam? Yeah, I would do plug talk with Adam. Now. Yeah, I would set it up. I would do plug talk. I don't. I, I I'm, fuck I'm with Adam, right now. and I think that there was a point where Adam wasn't really fucking with me behind the Benny shit. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Well, not, it, not, it's, not because it's, of Benny. Well, I think he's cool with Benny, right? Who? Adam. Yeah, I, I think I, he's not cool I, with Freddie. Everybody's cool with Benny, but yeah. I'm saying, Benny's a cool guy. I think that Adam wasn't really fucking with me for a short time because of the drama. You feel me? He's probably on set doing some shit. Every time I call this motherfucker, he's never answers. Oh, he's, you calling him? Yeah, I'm, I'm setting up blood talk right now. You don't got to set it up now. Oh, better late than never. Guarantee this motherfucker is on a set right he now. He probably is. They always doing some shit. Um, let me see. They always doing some shit. Yeah. Anyway, no, no, that, that'll be great. Okay, so we got new music. Um, people go check out your OnlyFans if they want to. Um... Merch, anything else we were putting on sale? Like, what are we looking for? I got for? some merch coming out. Um, it's every every day is like progress, you know. Um, big projects coming out with the music shit. Yeah. Um, a lot of shit for people to look forward to. But I want to know your thoughts on the song on Gangsters and Ballers. You fuck with it? Um, I liked it. I'm gonna be honest with you, I liked it. I actually I liked it more than I thought I was gonna like. You didn't post it though. I thought I did. You gotta post it. You gotta no, show me no, no, love. No, I thought I did. You didn't. I played it on stream though. You did? Yeah, of course. That, what? <laughs> what? I'm gonna need you to show me love, like for real. Well, so so here's the thing. I think the hardest challenge in just being very serious that you're gonna have have is you know, kind of getting these. You know, if if you rap about anything that is kind of drama like, it's gonna work. Yeah, because you know, I, I think you're decent enough with that, and people always want to hear from you, right? Then you have to start turning that into what is the content without that that people are going to be engaged with, and right. I, I think that's what you're probably or you should be trying to do now. Whenever you find that, it's going to work. Yeah, I think people are shocked that I know how to rap good. 
Yeah. Because they they me put too. me in this box of like, oh, she only knows how to fuck. She can't do nothing else. So then they hear me rap and they're like, how, how long did it take you to record that? Gangsters and Ballers? Yeah. 30 minutes. Really? That was only like my third time in the studio too. I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes to rap, there's is a little bit. Like th there's a little intro I have. Well, they played for all my streams now. I did a song called Blues Clues. I recorded it. You it, rapped? Yeah. I had a whole little... I had a whole little wave, little AK. You gonna give me a feature or what? Shit, I, I'm down. And hey, you never seen this? Look, I'm gonna show you. I heard about it. Okay, all right, you know this. Cool. But why little AK and not big AK? Well, so little AK was that's when everybody was little back then. Oh, and then <laughs> I turned into big AK when I started popping shit. You know what I mean? Okay. But um, overall, it was just academics. It's all good. I, I was gonna actually rap battle um, Freddie. It's gonna beat his ass. Literally. What? What? I was gonna have like a real rapper like write the shit though. Oh, okay. Like, these guys are my friends. Some people nicer than Freddie. I'm like, just write the shit for me. Yeah. I won't ever tell this you. You know what <laughs> I mean? The delivery might be trash, but whatever. That would have been a sight to see. No, I'm fucking with him. Okay, I'm glad I'm glad we finally met. Um let's keep let's keep this, you know, relationship going. I like this, you know. Yeah. Um it, hopefully after this we won't be having to predicate anything on whether it's Freddie hate, Freddie love, it'll be just more about, you know. It's just about um, me. Destiny or, you know, what was it? Des Storm. Desi Storm. Desi Storm. I Good like luck him. and Godspeed to him, but I got other shit I got to handle. Last question. You do come across to me like someone who needs purpose, someone who needs to, like, you're not the, hey, I'll get with a billionaire and just cook all day and take care of it. Like mm -hmm. you want, you want. I don't even cook. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh shit. Yeah. Ramen noodles. I mean, yeah, I could cook basic shit, okay, okay, spaghetti, okay. all that. You could boil egg though, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But I'm not like throwing it down. Okay. You okay. feel me? But, but but you seem like the person who wants to have a fulfilling experience in life, where like, hey, listen, I'm working towards something. Just like you know, hopefully your partner is, and hopefully you guys could meet. You know, in the middle, not necessarily on like taking care of things, but it's like, hey, I'm not just some chick that's here to look pretty and be available to fuck right I, i'm i everybody wants purpose i don't care who you are um i wake up every day my kids give me purpose i don't li i don't look for that in a partner um but you know you can find that in a partner right um you can find that in your job you can find that in um, in many things uh for right now it's it's my kids and and, and it's the music so Dope. All right, people, please uh, go check her out on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, Google Play, wherever you do listen to music, even on YouTube. You will catch her under the moniker uh, Desi Storm. Uh, you can, of course, check her out on Twitter, which is, I believe, Destiny Creams. Destiny Creams. Destiny Creams on Twitter. You might have to search a couple of times because I ain't going to lie. I don't know what it is about my Twitter. Like, I got to type out every letter. They have you super shadow banned. Like, really? Well, I think it's for, like all adult entertainers oh like, you have to if you search it you won't populate in the search terms mm -hmm. i have to go to your actual at name. what about my instagram um your instagram is better it's better the fit mommy like, yeah. yeah twitter is just like yeah. they they do the same thing to even like um adam's wife like oh yeah like if, if i literally type lend the plug is a search can't find it mm. you have to actually put her entire at name and go to her page they hating on us yeah well you, 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 you gals make enough money. You know, it's not like you're starving. Anyway, uh, anything else to announce? Anything else you want to tell the people? No, that's it. All right, man. Um, do I get to meet the kid before Freddie or no? <laughs> Come on. You're probably going to meet him before Freddie. Damn, Freddie. Yo, Freddie, uh, on some grown man, non-bullshit shit, uh, I do think, you know, whatever little hissy fit and egotistical shit you got going on, you're going to eventually get off of that. Is this your baby mama? It's not a question if she's a baby mama. Like, you're going to fix or you're going to try to fix whatever issues have, you have with her. And you got to realize whatever even you and me or anybody else have is, is very temporary. That's a permanent decision you made. You brought a life into the, uh, into the world with this woman. And you should do right. You know, that's the least respectable thing of everything you've done, honestly. You got you to gotta do right. You know what I mean? And um, hopefully figure it out. I think you will. Um, and hopefully we'll hear another part of the story. When then. we get on stream. Shit, we could do it any time. You let me know. <laughs> you got to go viral, girl. <laughs> Shit, that's a Freddie line. Let's go viral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people. Thank you for watching another episode of Off the Record Podcast with DJ Academics. Uh, 
Destiny Cream, a.k.a. Desi Storm, we're out.